Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari 2600 homebrew and interviews about 2600 homebrew. <laughs> Today we have an extremely special show for you. We have the first developer spotlight show and it is with Thomas Yanch yes. and we are very excited about this. Yes. Um, so I'm sure all of you know who Thomas Yanch is and if you don't we'll be explaining who he is too and you'll be meeting him very shortly. Um, so but first we're gonna take care of some uh, business. So welcome everybody to the show. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Tanya. Hello. There's no cats here right now. No, they were just here, and they run off right as James flips over the camera. That's so. how it always works. Yeah. Yeah, they run away. But they if you away. do see a cat, you can put the little That's icon, right. cat icon. Yeah. I want to welcome all of our Twitch subscribers who support the show. Al Nefer, Cafe Man 2D, Captain Classic, Charles and Chegg, Dianoid, mm -hmm. Dan AVC, Glenn Main. Oh, I think I want to do something first. Make sure my audio is correct, because I didn't set that up. There we go. There, just in case there's any delays. weirdness. Yeah, delays. Charles and Chuck, Dino, Dan, VC, Glenn, Main, Gray Defender, Gretams, Ground Trooper, Jandal, and L. John and Knight, and in John and Nitro. Is that a new name? Johnny WC, Jupiter Storm, Carl G. Croco 2600, Mark Space Inc., Metal Atari 1969, Metal Lunar, Miss Command, MK Smith, Mr. Fix, Muddy Funster, Nathan Storm, Packerat VG, RC70, Repentless VG, Sir Sw Six Sweet, Sir Cat Leg, Socrates 0603. Spartan 501, Spiceware, S. Ramirez 2008, The D-Train 37, The Welshman 88, Thunkus, Tiki Dan K, and Trek M. Dean. Is that the longest list we've ever had? <laughs> the most subscribers keep, I keep saying that, but yeah. every week yeah. it's more subscribers. Yeah, and I want to thank awesome. everybody for their huge support yes. of the show. Yeah. And you could subscribe for free too if you link your Amazon Prime to your Twitch Prime mm -hmm. and click subscribe. And make sure you follow and subscribe and like on all the things um, on Twitch and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter where you'll be notified of big shows like this because I post them and then you'll know when they're on. Oh, and Andrew Davey is here. He said he's coming here to heckle you. Actually, he posted that somewhere else as well. Oh, uh, I can't remember. I think it was in the forum. So get ready for that, <laughs> Thomas. Um, and I want to thank everybody who's here live to watch the show. On Twitch, the D Train 37, Dan AVC, Andrew Davey, um, Thrust 26, I guess he's here to watch the show too. He's, he's here to participate in the show. <laughs> uh, Jupiter Storm 17, S. Ramirez 2008, uh, Whitmer D, that's a new ish Whitmert? name. I, I've Whitmert? seen it before. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Metal Atari, uh, Dianoid, Carl G, The Welshman 89, VSH, Karsten, that is definitely a new name. Yes. Welcome. CDDASHW, uh, that is a name. A new is name. Is that CDW? I bet it is. Uh, let's see. Pack Rat VG. Splendid Nuts in there. I don't know if you said. Spiceware. Spiceware. I don't think I did say Splendid Nuts. Yeah. Uh, Estimator 2008. Now Al Nefer. Nefer. Yeah. Um, Captain Classic. Captain Classic. And everybody Lots else. Names. Tons of names today. That's yep. awesome. Lots of names. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to skip almost all the news. There's going to be no news because I don't want to make uh, Thomas wait any longer than he has to <laughs> but there is very important news that zero page homebrew is changing the days we're going to be broadcasting on um right now it's wednesday wednesdays and sundays but we're yes. going to be changing to tuesdays and fridays um because things are changing <laughs> <laughs> um so it's tuesdays and fridays and uh our next show will be on tuesday at 6 p.m uh pacific time 9 p.m eastern um and you'll have to check be the listings because sometimes they'll be early, sometimes they'll be late. But eventually we'll settle into a routine. Yes. Um, but for then, I'll just keep announcing when the next show is. And you can check it on the Atari Age forums or just keep subscribed to things and you'll fi figure it out. Yeah. So I would like to introduce our guest today for Developer Spotlight. And the Developer Spotlight is we um, invite somebody on the show uh, who has put out you know a lot of games or has contributed in a massive way to uh homebrew communities uh the 2600 homebrew community and uh so you get a chance to ask them questions and we get a, a chance to ask their quest ask questions to them and run through the games mm -hmm. that they have made and i think it's uh i think it's a fun idea and we'll see how it goes mm -hmm. and we've already lined up our next one actually oh. daryl spice jr oh 
nice. It's going to be at the beginning of August. August? I think it's August 14th. Cool. So look for that one. Um, but I would like to first introduce you to Thomas Yanch. He has been programming the Atari 2600 for over 20 years. We'll find out how long. Um, for at least 20 years. Uh, his first post to the Stella mailing list was in August of 1999. Actually, August 21st, 1999. Mm -hmm. uh, he, has, he joined Atari Age on April 24, 2001. And he's posted over 26,000 comments. Oh, good number. Uh, his game Thrust was one of the first dozen 2600 homebrews to be put on cartridge. Mm -hmm. So one of the first homebrews ever. According to Arena Foot's uh, homebrew list. He is one of the three current members of the St of Stella, listed as Emulation Core Development, Jack of All Trades, helps with issues across all the code base. And he was the first person on Atari Age to make a comment about Zero Page Homebrew. <laughs> so it's only appropriate that he is the first person we spotlight in this new series. So if you could please welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, Thomas Yanch. And I'll get him unmuted. Just in case he was going to say some bad things. <laughs> um, so uh, let's make sure it's all good. Thomas, welcome to the show. Hi, everybody. And you're probably blasted everybody's ears. Let's fix that one second. Okay, try it again. Say hello. 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 Excellent. Much better. Yeah. So I'm going to turn it down locally so we don't get too much feedback. So thank you so much for coming on the show. I know you're an avid watcher of the show, which is excellent. I always see Thrust26 in the chat. Mm -hmm. So um, this should be a fun time. We're going to run through your games, and Tanya's going to play them, and I'm going to talk. <laughs> Maybe I'll play a couple. <laughs> and I've been told by Tanya she has not ever played uh, thrust. So this is going to be fun. That's a yeah. challenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, so we're going to be playing thrust first with the driving controller and the foot pedals, but, um, yeah, your first, my, my first feedback of this show was from you on April, 2018. You said, I watched you playing my own game swoops last night. That this was great as a developer, seeing people playing, enjoying my games mean a lot to me. And that you were uh, about the first who ever dug into Crash and Dive and even liked it. It was a blast. Thank you very much. And, and thank you so much for that feedback. And that's, that's partly why we do the show. To, to, to give exposure, more exposure to these games that really deserve it. There's a lot of you know, creativity and work that goes into mm -hmm. them. I guess that's not a question. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I, and uh, you also said I pronounced Yanch. And is, is that the exact pronunciation, Yanch? That's pretty close. Yes, that's okay. That's okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> How about you pronounce it for us? Yanch. 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 So, okay. okay. So it's really, Excellent. really fine. <laughs> it's fine. It's good enough. Um, so we're going to turn on your, your game Thrust, and this is from 2000, and there's lots of different editions put out. Um, it's, it said it was, it was put out under uh, Zeip, is that how I pronounce Zype. it? I don't know Zype. how to pronounce it. It's <laughs> Epix, Epix, you know the company? Oh yeah, in Epix. Re, Epix in reverse, so it's the idea of uh, Cyberghost, Manuel Pollock. Or Rochka after he married. So I don't know how to pro pronounce it correctly. I would say Xaip. Xaip. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what I thought. Mm -hmm. Epic's made incredible games. Yeah. And so I can understand adopting and, and switching around that name. Maybe you can explain a little bit about what Zype was about. It looked like it's kind of a an early collective of homebrew developers. Yes, um, basically it was something to form a group of programmers um, who, it, it was a close club, uh, uh, maybe you call it like this, because uh, I think it was founded because at that time the first, how do you call them, uh, not so well done games were flooding in and I think Manuel thought we should do something like a quality label or something. 
So, um, right. and and he founded Xype, and we started with, I think, three or four games, and it extended to six or seven, but soon, I, it didn't last very long, I think. It lasted maybe two years or three, I, I don't know exactly. And um, Yeah, I think you released, at least the ones that you contributed to or had your name under, I think there was like three three games. Could um, be, yes. It was like Thrust, Jammed. And Starfire? Yeah, Starfire is Manuel's game. Yeah, yes, mm -hmm. that's yeah. also, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and um, Thrust and Jammed was half a year apart, so it's a very short time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But some good quality games were, were put out under that under that label. And, and I guess that's... It was very important to kind of establish, you know, a, a bar <laughs> that everybody could look up to for homebrew. Yeah, and you know, really simple games because Thrust yeah, is, is but it an caused trouble. production. Yeah, but it caused trouble. Pe people called us elitish, probably you were, and uh, <laughs> the, so uh, we stopped doing this. And everybody can make up his mind on his own now. And right, yeah, and we get a so lot of, kind of we get a lot of great games without this label. Now, now uh, today. Atari Age is, not, is accused for the same because they're not releasing each and everything. So, right, you can't do it right for everyone. <laughs> no, no, and you just got to do your pretty much do your own thing and take whatever fallout. And it's kind of funny that there's controversy making homebrew games, but it's it's like that for any kind of small community, you know. It, there's always you know negative and positive things, but. Um, I, I find it's just best to ignore the negative things and focus on the positive. See, and, and I, Andrew remembers better than I do. <laughs> oh, yeah. We started to disagree on which games should be included. I, I guess that's okay. I guess that's a thing like, oh, which should go under Zype? Who should be let into Zype? Exactly. Yes. And who shouldn't? And is this game worthy? Or no, you have to release it separately. This isn't a, what our standard. So I, I could see that happening. As people increase, the controversy increases, yeah. as 06502 says, yeah. So I'm going to set up Tanya going on the game. We've okay. got it streaming here. So this is uh, really unique. Uh, there's no other game for Homebrew that I know that uses this control scheme. Or I give you the option of using this control scheme which is actually incredible and and it's the perfect control scheme for this okay but so, but i can't take credit for this the credit comes from somebody else uh, there's a, yeah there's a long story about thrust i mean well we have it, time <laughs> it, 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 it was the first game i developed and uh, because i i liked it as a c64 game it was one of the few right. games i really bought and not just copied and um and when I started switching over from assembler programming for the PC to this um, Atari, uh, I thought this would match the, the abil abilities for, of, the, of the TIA very well. So um, yeah. that's why I started. And it was released without all these extras, like the driving controller and right. uh, the great music from Paul, which was added as uh, later on. Yeah. Incredible music. Like, yeah, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Even even today, like this is a twenty year old homebrew. Yes. And the music is is mind blowing. It's very full. It's very rich. And if you listen to it in stereo, Al's Al's Atari twenty six hundred here is oh, is a stereo one. And I was just oh, cool. like, I've never heard it in stereo. And and it's incredible. Yeah, it's really really cool. I mean, it's um, Paul. It, Paul is a genius when it comes to music. Um, he, he also he also did a game, in, it's Marvel Craze, which you also had on the show. And so he's yeah, he's a multi-talented. Yeah, he can do he can do music and programming. I can only do programming. I can do music. <laughs> and uh, uh, so this thing came from a guy called Yafish. That's later. And things up. and maybe you have read about the story of this Rust Combat Pack, which was not very nice. <laughs> There was no, a, I didn't. 
Oh, you didn't. Should I tell something not so nice on the show? Um, sure, let's let's start off with that. It's, um, it's all it's all yeah, because there's so there's a lot. This is a long development. This game and there's different versions that came out and yes, it's 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 all public, so it's nothing to hide here. Um, right. So Jaffisch, uh, he's a German guy from Berlin, contact, contacted me and he wanted to make a special edition from Thrust. Um, and I said, okay, if you yeah do it. Um, what 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 are your your ideas? And he added some. Common ideas like pause key, yeah, which later turned out yep. not to function very well in, in this version. But anyway, um, and yep. and the fo and he came up with the foot pedal and the driving controller. I mean, he came up with the driving controller and I said, yeah, but it, this doesn't work. I need something more because um, only the driving controller there's a button missing. Yeah, we need at least two buttons then. And right. he, he came up with the foot pedal because he had a source where they were really, really cheap at this time. Somebody was um, throwing them basically away. You have to yeah. tell her. Yeah. That was <laughs> yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, you have to pick it up and go straight I up. I know this keeps okay. sliding. Is there something you can put in front of it? Oh. Here, let me find I don't know. Heavy. I'll that? be right back. You can put, the foot, yeah. put that. Hitting it and then it keeps pushing away. <laughs> oh, everybody, here's the box for it, the yeah. foot pedal. <laughs> <laughs> That's better. Okay, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> I want to make sure people aren't like yelling at the screen at Tanya. <laughs> <laughs> Do that! Yeah, and, 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 uh, okay, I like the idea. He wanted them signed, each, each copy was signed, and everything was fine. Um, Very cool ideas, yeah. I gave him some money to fund the, uh, some, to buy the things he needed, the uh, foot pedals and stuff like this. And yeah. When it came, and he did also, also the whole the handling, the, the cartridge were done by Husa, and um, he, he, he had to be paid as well, and, and he was also collecting money from people. Yeah. Yes, and when it came to delivery, he disappeared. <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. And yes. especially the cost of all the foot pedals, and just, that, that would add up quite a bit. And, yeah. and of course it's not you know your money it's it's like lots of people's money and you have yes to deal yes with that fallout yeah and of course i didn't disappear so i got a lot of flack and people asking where is my copy where is it and i said i don't know it's not me handling this it's it's, it's Jaffish. and i was trying to find him and people helped me um looking after him and uh yeah this we even organized a lawyer and sent him. Oh boy! And yeah, yeah. And then he finally reacted. In, in the genie, we had some mails which he tried to postpone things and said he has this and that problem. But we found out he had sev several problems. Um, mm. And when we came up with a lawyer, the situation became better. <laughs> and uh, yeah. so people, more people, got their copies. And in the end, I'm very happy that everybody got his copy. Oh, good. So the, the story turned out good in the end but it was probably a lot of stress and a lot of complication yes. a, a lot of extra cost of course getting a lawyer involved they charge hundreds of dollars an hour and you don't really want to talk to them more than you have to <laughs> yeah, by that time by that time i was developing or started developing robot city i mean i was doing my mini games and and um it yeah. just and i abandoned developing because i had no motivation at this moment to do programming because i I knew I had to fix this first. Nobody would understand that I would come up with a game while like, people were waiting uh, for something they had paid for. That's true. So, so did that did that sour you on um, working with other people beyond that? Or were you just a little bit more careful? I think I'm more careful since then, yes. I mean, there was yeah. also some fuss with Husa and uh, between Atari H and Husa and me in the middle and some other people and... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more yeah. careful now. Yeah, yeah, that's it's and that's totally understandable. Um, it's it's it's, yeah, it's so a that shame. That's my question about the driving controller. Yeah. It, it, so it wasn't um, that wasn't your idea to use the driving controller, but it turns out that it's an incredible use for it, and it and it works really well. And and it's the driving controllers, like I can't name another game that I can think of a uh, homebrew that uses the driving controller and do you know why that is I, I think there's it's pretty low resolution isn't it yes it has really low resolution it's just 16 positions per full turn so that's yeah, so, 
10 or 100 times less than the trackball. Yeah, so it's really, really low. So Yeah, so it would be only useful for very specific types of games that you don't have to turn very fast in. Yes, you, you cannot do a pedal game and, and put a driving controller. And if you think about Kaboom, you would only have 16 oh. positions at the bottom and would need a full turn. Yeah, yeah where, where now you're spinning constantly. <laughs> yeah, and, and currently you do 20 degrees, yeah, something like this, or 30 degrees for, for from left to right. And with the driving controller, yeah. it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Yeah, it's too bad they didn't make it more more sensitive. It because it continually spins. It's it's just it's so useful for so many games that yeah, but, the paddle just hits hits a wall and you can't keep going. Yeah, but if you make it more sensitive, then you have the problem with the trackball. You have to pull it very frequently else you miss That's a change true. yeah so <laughs> and how about a, a variable setting control <laughs> on something i don't know we it's can't physical. do that now but it's physical. But i guess we have the options we have the trackball there's the, the driving controller there's the paddle and they all fulfill their own different purposes so yeah but tanya is not doing really bad i mean uh, i've seen <laughs> the i'm i'm slowly figuring it out slowly yeah. Uh, just a so, tip: you can shoot as a at the power plant for let's say five or six shots, yeah. and this oh. will and this will disable the the guns for a while. Ah, oh, there you go. Ah, okay. Yeah. Just so, for a while. So that'll just that'll for help while. you for the first couple ah, ah, couple guys. Ah. Oh, you're going to the stratosphere. Yeah, I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> the more shots, um, the more the longer they will be dis uh, disabled. But if you shoot too many, then it will go boom. <laughs> oh. I think so, 10 is the yeah. maximum. So 10? No. Okay, so that'll give you yeah, a bit more time to, to take out at least the first centuries. Yeah, people are saying, congrats, you did it. <laughs> sort of. Um, Esramir says, quite challenging, but in a good way. Love the C64 version, and I love the 2600 version even more. Uh, and he says, oh, the best oh. way to play Thrust Plus is with the pedal driving controller. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the joystick works really well as well with this um so i have some questions um that were posted um it's from captain classic and i thought these ones were good ones um the commodore 64 dominated germany during the 1980s and the atari vcs didn't get to germany till 1979. uh when did you first start playing the atari 2600? i saw the um, atari 2600 on the ifa that's a uh, uh... It's an electronic fair in Berlin, biannual, and I played it there, Asteroids, and I yeah, yeah. really, it was great for me, I mean, and then I made, collected money to buy it for me. I think I bought it then late 81 or early 82, something like this. Yeah. But at that time, it was really expensive in Germany, and uh, in the end, I had only three cards. I think three uh, asteroids or four asteroids, uh, Star Master, uh, football, and Cosmic Arc. Yeah, yeah, Pe yeah. Pele Soccer was it? Football, yeah. So, uh, but we, we, I had friends and we were exchanging cards. So, oh, that's great. So you yeah. get more of a variety that way. Yeah, Missile um, Command and, and Pitfall and things like these. Oh, okay. Yeah. And but I, this, I, I, it didn't last very long. You are to answer your question. It didn't last very long. It's, it's not your question. And uh, the C64 took over, and oh yeah, of course I switched because there you could program. And I think I always was interested into doing things. Yeah. So did you, you did you start programming on the Commodore 64? Is that where you started, or was it a little bit earlier than that on another system? More or less. A friend of mine had an Auric, a French system. Uh, so we did some basic programming there, but really programming I started on C64, yes. Yeah, and and I can see why you... I think you've said that Thrust... I have the question later, but I was... Might as well, like Thrust-type games, I think they called them a, another different name in here. Um, Gra gravity you, games or something? Once, I think a cave something, cave exploring games or cave driving or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and I think you said once these are your favorite types of games, and you're named Thrust Twenty Six on the uh, on the chat, and and so I can understand why Asteroids drew you in to yes. the Twenty Six Hundred. Yeah, they uh, have because some it's, inertia. It's a similar style of game. 
yeah, they have some inertia. It's not like up and down, and they're a bit realistic. Yeah, so as much <laughs> as the system does it. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. So it's not surprising that you know making thrust as your first game would be this style of game. Um, no, no. It, it was always a favorite game when I had a C64. And I really, really liked it and I played it through. Uh, so, yeah, it's it's a challenging game, as, as Tanya can tell. And, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, and you too. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, but I really liked it, yes. I still like it. Yeah, and there's a lot going on. It's not just shooting and firing. There's You have to, you know, keep keep the inertia up. And there's things firing at you. And it's, it's, it's fairly complicated, actually, for... For a first game, it's actually an extremely complicated programming exercise. It's not a single screen. There's scrolling and mm -hmm. like a lot, a lot going on. So it, was this actually your first game on yes. the Atari 2600? That's incredible. Like you didn't, you just went right for it. You didn't start <laughs> off small. You just went, I'm going to make it a, a, a huge game. That's, yes. That's incredible. I mean, it 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 fell very well together. It's it's really not that complicated. I mean, the 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 caves and the, the scrolling, it, it was not that complicated. The the most complicated thing is the physics when the pot is attached, and and draw, uh. and drawing the tow bar. So these things were the most complicated things, and this took me a yeah. bit of time. I, I, Ah, yeah, I can imagine that because you're you're dealing with two different objects and your acceleration and the acceleration of the the, the other objects on you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really really complicated. Yeah, that was um, a funny part. <laughs> I wrote a Pascal so Captain Classic program. also asks: um, Are there any VCS German exclusive titles worth playing? I don't know. Or do you know of any? Um, he listed some, but I've never played them really much. I think I converted some into NTSC, but I don't think there is much coming to Germany which was not in the United States. I think, wasn't there a magic game which was like Joust? Wing War or something like this? I think this never made it to the US originally. That looked pretty good, but the other ones I can't tell. Right. I, I guess you would, um, Germany is PAL. So you would have most of the PAL exclusives would be released, I guess, in in uh, Germany. Yeah, there's like yes. Nuts, Pharaoh's Curse, Pamuckle, <laughs> Save Our Ship, and that's about it that it says for Germany. Uh, the ones he listed are not very interesting, no. <laughs> Pharaoh's, <laughs> Curse, Pharaoh's Curse is a clone of Tutankham, or however you call pronounce it. Tutankhamun, yeah, that's a really mm. interesting, that's a uh, great game. Pumakel, Pumakel is a variation of Panda Chase. I don't yeah. remember the other two. Nuts is, I don't know how to compare it. It's it's a generic platform game, so it's not very interesting. I think these came from from, from Asia. Uh, okay, yeah. So there's some questions here. They're all kind of related. When did you first start programming the Atari 2600 and what inspired you to start programming the 2600? Like, like why this system? Okay, first I had one. Yeah, so, um, and right. second, I was doing assembly programming for the PC, for the Intel x86 all the time. Uh, I started programming with the C64 and I learned the assembly language. So that was the first thing. So I yeah. knew it already, and when I did... You knew the 6502? Yes, yes, and <laughs> 6510 to be precise, I mean, this is easy, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I, then I did PC programming, and it was really fun, but the, the, the CPUs became really complicated with pipelining and stuff like this, and after a while I found out, yes, I can do it faster than a compiler, but it's very, very... Laborers. I did some mm. did some coding for Fract, and I don't know if anybody remembers this thing. It's a fractal graphics generator. Uh, mm. At this time, fractals were very very popular, and I liked them as a lot. And I have some code in it, some floating point CPU code. Uh, but then the Pentium 2 appeared, and then it was uh, it it started uh, to to lose fun. 
And I looked mm. for something else and I read an article in a magazine where they talked about emulators. I never heard about it or never t cared. And so I looked into it and I found Z26. And I and suddenly I could play all the games again. I had played, well, how long ago? Almost 20 years ago. And that was fun. And, 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 and when I found the Stellar mailing list, I thought, hey, I should do something too. And then I thought back, what is what did I like when I was playing? And it was Rust. And I thought, hey, maybe it was a play field. I could do the lines. And right. there are not that many sprites. Yeah, I think it should work. And so I started. Nice. Uh, so we're going to move on to Jammed. <laughs> so this show isn't five hours long. <laughs> <laughs> As I try to get to level three. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now we're going to switch over to... That's fun, though. The joystick. And I do I, I do believe I have played that game. But I think we played it on the joystick, not with the... Um... Oh, really? Yeah. That seems I surprising. Just don't, I don't recall using the foot, oh, foot pedals. Because I, I bought the foot pedals later. Yeah. Because it's like, oh, well, I might as well play this the right way. No, you, 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 yeah. you, you try it. It makes a big difference. You yeah, it makes a big difference, the foot pedals. I remember you tried with a foot pedal as well, but I, I, I think you didn't get the setup right for a long time. So, and then it was... It took, a it took a long time to configure it. I don't know why it took a long time, but <laughs> it took me a long time to figure out which pedals were doing what. And sometimes I had two assigned to the same pedal and it was like just... It wasn't driving working me properly. crazy, mm -hmm. but I mean, I just didn't wrap my head around it. It's actually a very simple thing to set up. So jammed, yeah. Jam. So this is uh, listed as your second game, and mm -hmm. this is also um, um, put out through Zype, and um, it's available both in the Atari Age Store and the Pack Rat Store. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And this. It's seemingly like this would be a game that you would cut your teeth on and put out first um, because compared to thrust this seems like more of a, a starting type of game one that which you, you would do before diving into something as complex as thrust um, so what what motivates your decision in terms of what type of game you're going to make like this is radically different this is a puzzle game the other one's you know an action game mm -hmm. What what makes you choose which game to make next? Just what I think I like to do. It's there's no plan or something like this. Um, there was a game on the Stellar mailing list called Crazy Wallet, which had the same gameplay basically. And yeah. um, I liked the game idea very very much, but this and initially this game had like 20 puzzles in it, and I thought, oh, that's a bit low. I mean, you you. After 20 puzzles, you have you're through. Especially and for a retail game. Yes. That you're going to possibly sell. You could finish that in one session. Yeah, yeah. So I started wondering, hmm, should, I, I should, should try maybe make it a bit better. And, and um, what, I, what I found interesting is um, how many puzzles can I squeeze into 4K plus ah. classic UI? So... Mm, I developed an algorithm to compress puzzles, and right. and my employer at that time had a Pentium 800, uh, um, Pentium 2, I think, which yeah. I used overnight to generate puzzles. Oh wow! <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how would it how would it do this generation? It would it would like solve them or work backwards or how did you uh, generate the puzzles? To be honest, I don't exactly remember, but I think I think it was in reverse. I think it was in reverse. Right. But, so you'd bring the car in, and then you'd start moving things around, and yes, but yeah. you have to to backtrace to see if there's a shortcut. And then if there's a shortcut, then it's uh, because I need to know how many solutions a puzzle has and uh, how, how how fast it is. So if it's an True. easy one or a complicated one, so. Um, yeah, and, and also in the end, then I wrote another program who, who selected the puzzles who are very different and who compress well. Yeah. So that's what... Yeah, because it could be shifting around all these pieces, but then at the end, it would just be like, you move one and you're out. It's yes. So it didn't, you'd have to kind of supervise the computer to make sure it did a good job. <laughs> yes. So in the end, I'm, yes, it's 600. I didn't know when I started. 
but it, it seemed like a nice number. Uh, 600. Yes. How did you compress 600 puzzles into 4K? Yeah, it's, um, I mean, in, when you start putting a piece on the board, there are man, many positions, but the more pieces are on the board, the less possible positions it has. So you, you can reduce the number of bits you need. And so in the end, I think it was, I don't know, you have to do the math, how much is it? Per, I think it's 1.5K for everything else and 2.5K for the puzzle. So it's then, yeah. what is it, four bytes per puzzle. Four bytes. Okay, I, I can see that because you have like only X number of blocks and you have to say, well, is it horizontal or vertical? And how long is it? And it's starting position and mm -hmm. you can compress it even more from there. Yes. Um, and then I have Huffman comp uh, encoding in it. So to, to encode it even better. So wow. it, this is more a technical exercise, it's, it, which uh, happens to be a game. Yeah. What? what? I was just looking at the chat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I, was, me. I didn't yeah. mean to distract. <laughs> yeah. The Captain nope. Classic asked uh, how many puzzles are in the game. So you answered that. Um, and Carl G says, I'm often impressed how much some developers can fit into 4K. And that is, that's a challenge. That's a challenge that s developers put on themselves sometimes. It's mm -hmm. like, I want to make a game in, you know, 2K or 4K or, you know, I want to have a ton of puzzles in this. And is, was that part of the motivation for this? I mean, you did talk about that as like, oh, the guy only did 20. Mm -hmm. um, that, I can improve on that. Yeah, that was a motivation because I thought, hey, I mean, I talked to him, but I, he was on the, on a different mission and he was, was not that much interested into going into this. And I thought this gameplay idea, which I didn't know before, is really, really yeah. great. So why waste it? with such a game i mean crazy well it was was inspiration and I, I talked to him and he was not angry or something like at me that i did it <laughs> yeah. it was it was about the same time i mean he, he was i think his releases when trust came out and jam came out i think half a year later so it was yeah oh that's very cool um let's see so i have some more questions from captain classic um you previously stated that you use 6502 assembly to make your games, and the results are impressive. Aardvark, Boulder Dash, Thrust, Star Castle Arcade. What are the reasons why you want to stick with 6502 assembly um, as opposed to going on to another system with more powerful graphics, audio, RAM, like the Atari 800 or Commodore 64 or NES since you know the 6502? I think this one is very, very basic and very, very different because raising the beam is nowhere else. I have programmed yeah. stuff, stuff for frame buffer and things and it makes things really, really easy uh, compared right. to this. Yeah, yeah. And and I'm doing high high level language programming as my job. So when you come to to modern consoles, you soon switch to high, high level language development and you switch to large teams because else you cannot do something really, really good. So for me, it's a really good one. You do it in teams of one or two or maybe three and um, it's a small community. Everybody is friendly, few exceptions as always, but it's really a great community. And so it's a lot of fun. And I don't think yeah. why I should I mean, I'm doing stellar development in parallel, so how much more can I do? <laughs> uh, I'll, you, you do a lot, that's, and that's, that's a later question for sure uh, mm -hmm. that we have. Um, yeah, I, I find it, that's why I stick around this community too. It's, it's really, really friendly. It's very supportive. It's very active, like more so than a lot of other um, homebrew development communities. It's probably one of the most active in terms of output and you know just sheer numbers of messages going back and forth um so it's it's really vibrant and always kind of pushing pushing the envelope of what can be done and yes. like you said the factor of the uniqueness of the system 
which yes. is why I, always, I like the Vectrex as well. It's mm -hmm. something on its own. It's its own entity. Nothing is like it. And the Atari 2600, its strengths and drawbacks are the same thing. It's racing the beam. You draw it now. Like, yeah. You can't set up a frame buffer. You have to do precise coding at the time that it needs to be done. Yeah, the Vectrex so would be an alternative if I had one or I had owned one. Yeah, then I would be interested. But yeah. it's out of reach and no, I don't think it will happen. <laughs> yeah, the Vectrex is somewhat similar is that you have only so much time to draw on the screen before you have to start again and draw. And, you know, you have to draw as many lines as you can or else it slows down and and it's very interesting in its own way. Andrew um, says you, you can set up a frame buffer, something virtual, uh, yes, but is it really a frame buffer? <laughs> when you do a, I mean, do, you can do a fixed um, p p 96 pixel flickering display and, and see, see, see it as a frame buffer. Or with an arm, you can do it full screen almost. But yeah, yeah but no, nah, that's not, not the uh, Atari 2600 anymore. It, it's it's very different. Yeah, it takes it into a different a different well, realm, and you have to think about it differently. Um, Dianoid has a question. Um, he hasn't typed it yet, but yes, you can ask questions here. Um, we are reading the chat as much as we can. <laughs> um, oh, question, Dianoid. You picked up development on Robot City again after a long period. Oh, we have that question later when we're playing Robot City. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, da, da, da. Oh, well, we could ask this one. This is different. How did you manage to get into the coding again? Uh, do you leave a lot of comments in your code so it's easier to understand what you were doing? Myself, I always have a ta hard time understanding my own code when I haven't looked at it for a long time. Because later on, we'll, we'll get into that, that there's a number of projects that you started a long time ago and then you picked up again what mm -hmm. is it like revisiting and do you have to figure it out from scratch it's like what was i what was i doing here i have no idea are you a good commenter uh it depends you know, there, there are parts <laughs> which are obvious i mean the kernel is usually easier to understand because you see yeah. directly what's going on but if you have some complex algorithm for example the the maze generation in robot city i haven't touched it I left it as it was because um, I saw the comments and I vaguely remembered what I did, but no, I, I don't want to do this again and I better <laughs> leave it alone. Yeah, so that's right. both sides. Um, I've learned over time that comments help and I've learned, <laughs> yeah. over, t I learned over time that um, Sometimes you need a break, and uh, so when you do not comment, then it's even harder to stop with a break because you, you're afraid of your own code. So it helps. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, you look at it yeah, and say, uh, no, I don't, don't know, what was this? I can't remember. So <laughs> do, do some yeah, comments. Yeah. yeah, do some comments. So when you do your own game, comment. <laughs> that's the lesson. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, yeah, that's a good idea. Even though... You don't feel like it at the time and you, oh, it's in my head. I know what this means. Well, mm -hmm. later on, you may not and you may not be able to fix it. Even sometimes um, the, so the next day. I mean, that's, that even happens the next day. You come back and say, oh, what was I doing there? So because you went to job, had some other things to do, and then you come back and you forgot. That can happen. And yeah. then it takes longer to come back and to be, become productive. So it's on and off and co comments out so i'm gonna switch games now uh the next one's not really <laughs> i just turn it off mid game he just hits the we're not, hits we're not the really reset. playing the games for playing the games i am playing the games for playing the games thank you very much that's that was a lot of fun actually so i was enjoying myself go down to um jt's ball show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. That's a good, that's a great game. I love puzzle games. So yeah, I, I could play that. I could play that the whole stream. All the way to number six hundred. <laughs> number six hundred. Yeah, we'll try that one day. You should try six hundred. It's it's forty nine moves, I think, uh, until the end. Forty nine. Okay, now I really want to get there. I, I would enjoy that actually. Yeah, <laughs> I would enjoy that. Oh, an experiment. Yes. <laughs> yes. 
So I just included this. Um, it's not a game because you can't do anything in it. Yeah. It's a demo. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, but I thought it was really, really interesting. It, um, it was labeled as an unplayable kicks type game. Yes. Bouncing balls in a maze. And um, yeah, and it's it's got a flicker handling routine in it. Um, it's a really nice maze. So what was your... Um, what were you trying to do here? Or what were you hoping to develop this into? Yeah, into, I was thinking about quicks as, as, or sticks as I've learned it on the C64. There it was a number of lines attacking you. I don't know. I've never played quicks, I think, at this time. And I thought, yeah, instead of lines or something, do balls. Yeah, I mean, it's they just have to happen to move in an erratic way and it becomes complex enough. I... Yeah. Yeah, it worked out, but I, I don't know why I stopped. Maybe I did something else in parallel. I'm not even sure if it's chronological before swoops or after swoops. I'm not sure. It, yeah, it says 2002 and swoops. I mean, the earliest one says on my notes 2003, so it's around the same time. Around the same time, yes. Yeah. So probably I got distracted by the the swoops games. <laughs> so are these these balls like actively like sensing? Oh, I've hit a wall. I need to bounce yes. off of it in a certain direction. Yes, yeah, yes, they're not yes. pre-programmed. No, like no, just active balls. Oh, that's very very cool. So you just let them go, and they they know what to do. Yes, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, yeah, it's, they look like they're getting all around the place, yeah. And I they get in so. that little corner there. So it, it's, I mean, it might be inspirational for somebody like, oh, I could make, you know, you have to avoid the balls and go collect things in a corner or something. I'm not sure. Because a lot of attempts have been made to do quicks or kicks, whatever you want to pronounce it. Mm. But the play field is always the limiting factor on the Atari 2600. It's just too thick vertically. The smallest you can do is four pixels, uh, and you just that's what you have to draw the play field in. Mm. So it's unfortunate because it's such a fun game. Yeah, it's it's yeah that that's the problem. The the, vert the horizontal resolution you can't do thin lines vertically. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're I just wanted to show this. It's not it's not a game. We can't play it, but that's it's cool. it's really really cool looking and. Um, yeah, I just wanted to know a little bit of the story behind it. So we're going to move on to Starfire, which is not your game, but you contributed to it. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So let's take a look at the... Uh, mm. Stay on the intro left. screen <laughs> for Starfire. Because I believe that's... Is that the only portion of Starfire that you did? Is um, Or did you contribute some to the game code as well? No, I don't think so. I only did uh, the title screen or parts of the title screen. Um. And the music is again from Paul, right? Right. Very, very good music again. Start up. Yep. Yep. Um, so, can you talk a little bit about how you were able to? How did you store the writing of it? It's it's pixel for pixel drawing oh, yeah. the Starfire on the screen. Oh, oh. sorry. That is not what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> you want to there stay on this? Yeah, sorry um, about that. So, it, and it's not like a sweeping motion. It's not mm -hmm. like going down like this. It is like tracing the outline. Did you have to like say every X, Y coordinate of every pixel? How did you do this? No, I, I've added only the graphics. So the final graphics. And then I do boundary tracing. Oh, okay. And I write it, I think, in RAM. Yeah, I mean, you take the graphics and put pixel by pixel into RAM, and that, that's then this plate. Mm, yeah. So it's, it's boundary it's tracing. A, uh, excellent, excellent effect. Yeah. Um, and a question from D Train um, Thomas, it seems like a lot of your contributions are behind the scene doing code optimization. How did you end up doing that rather than more public game design? Because I've run across that too. Like looking through whatever code or looking through comments of people developing games 
or you know thank yous and manuals and your name appears like everywhere like <laughs> all the time constantly um are people referencing code that you've made or are you actively you know helping them as games are are being made because like earlier i said twenty six thousand comments in the atari age forums it's it's incredible Mm. Yeah, usually it's it's my code in there or or my data or something like this is in the in the games. Yes, it's um, credits for just um, referencing to me. Maybe they exist, but I'm not aware. So usually it's I'm helping with the games, and it's fun. I have fun in algorithms, and I have fun into squeezing things into little space. As you can see with jammed, jammed, it started there, yeah. and then came swoops. And um, I learned a lot of squeezing things into very, very little space. And I, um, um, the problem is, even the ARM games, they run out of space. And um, yeah, but sometimes a game wouldn't come through without some compression, like, like um, not Scramble, the, the next one uh, from John. Yeah, I always, yeah, um... I always forget the name. Super oh, Cobra, you... Super Cobra. Super Cobra Arcade, yeah. yeah. Um, it seemed impossible to fit the landscape into into the into the ROM, into the 32K ROM, and right. um, and yeah, because um, it's a huge game, tons and tons of landscape, yeah. Yeah, and so I thought, yes, maybe I can help a bit, and um, we found out um, that that the game is built out of uh, pieces so the landscape is not completely different so they are repeating pieces and it's only deltas i mean you can see it's ramping up ramping down so you don't have to store everything you only have to store deltas and deltas you can compress much better than than lengths yeah? because it's only plus right. one minus one or zero so it's usually yeah so right. and so you look for patterns and blocks and, and how you can compress and store things. Mm -hmm. so do you like you do you reference the source ever or do you just figure it out on your own? Because a lot of these games are ports or games that have been made on other systems. Um, because I, I when I talk to John Shampo, he always says, No, I don't look at I don't look at anybody else's source. I just kind of figure it out. On my own and Same here. come to it on my own. Same, Same here, here, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Play? Oh yeah, you can go ahead okay. and play. They've seen that. <laughs> We're gonna switch now, anyway, though. Oh no. Nah. Um, yeah, we have played this game. But there are questions <laughs> in the stream. Times. You should look at the stream as well. Look at this. The screen. The stream. Oh, this. The the, the, the oh, chat in the stream. Yeah. Uh. Always wondered how the title were all the TIA objects used in this demo. I think that was for the last demo. The, the jazz ball, as I call it. I think it's yeah. It's if I remember correctly, yes. I think I, I used uh, maybe not the ball, not the ball, but the other ones are used. Yes. Yeah, I don't. I don't think you used the missiles either. I think it was everything was two play the two players. I think I looked at the. You know better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. It's uh, too long yeah. ago. You have yeah, to check yeah, it. Yeah, we in played Stella. this recently, and we we couldn't we couldn't get the patch. <laughs> we tried. It's such a hard game. Mm -hmm. It's definitely challenging. Yeah. No, if you know how to play it, it's easy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean that's it. You figure out the little tricks, and you 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 know narrow it down and get better at those tricks, and either discover them on your own or you get somebody to help. But we we got. Close. I think I got close, but not not yet. Um, so we're gonna go to uh, swoops now. Poor Tanya. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Tanya. I shouldn't have done that many games, right? <laughs> then you had more time. <laughs> oh, that's that's why we have you on. It just it's... means we have to spill it over into another episode. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the swoops cart, and this is a uh, loaded up. Yep, I was going to say, I don't know if you noticed, all of a sudden I was playing and I'm like, why am I not controlling the screen? And it <laughs> had completely come out. I'm hitting the button and my oh. and I'm just drifting. So, <laughs> But you, you you were talking too much to, to notice. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, I yeah, saw it. I saw it. I have a better <laughs> angle of the camera, you know? I see it in front oh, of me. Oh, yeah, right here. <laughs> right it's like, bloop. I'm like, what, what's going on? <laughs> it's like when you hand your controller to your your 
five-year-old sibling it's like oh yeah you can play the game and it's not plugged in yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> play the game with me sorry which one are we swoops okay swoops. so it's a mini game collection oh. uh, so was this um more of a challenge for you i can yeah. like creating small games and what kind of a game can i fit into 1k kind of thing um there was a there was a mini game competition which was quite popular at this time uh, where m multiple systems, eight-bit systems, were competing for, for, for price or for glory or whatever you call it, and uh, <laughs> yeah. this was really really cool. There were a lot of talented people from different systems doing their games, and they had categories, and one of them was 1K. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, I, I I thought, yeah, why not? I mean, one I I knew 2K games, so 1K yeah. should be possible. And um, yeah. I started, I think, with with uh, Cave, Cave One K. That was the first yeah. one I started with. Um, and um, this one was the winner on the C64 one year before, as a One K oh, game. Okay. And yeah. so and I asked the author if I could use the idea for a, a Atari game, and he said yes, sure, why not? And he really liked the result. So. Um, yeah, it's 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 pretty simple. The most complex yeah. thing is um, that the platform generation has to work. I mean, you have to you cannot just right. make them random, but you have to make sure that that it's possible. I mean, or, or you have to make at least very sure that it's possible. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, so they're close enough to each other and vertically as well. Yeah, that you uh, can make it. And that the density is more or less constant. I mean, it gets it get low. You get less platforms in later levels, when the game gets harder. But initially, it yeah. should be about the same, and not that you have an empty screen suddenly because something. Yeah, and then the full screen. It wouldn't work. So that was yeah. fun. And I, I I'm I'm guessing on on Dianoid's game Amoeba Jumper, he had to come uh, figure out the same kind of thing. You don't have too much yes, vertical so. distance. Yeah. He's in the chat. Maybe you can talk about this. Did you have the same problem that you had to look after that, that this thing is still solvable? Yeah, Lance Armstrong brought it up. It, it's like a side scrolling amoeba jump. It is. <laughs> Very <laughs> That's similar. Right. Oh, yes. And I love I love these type of games. I love platformers and easy to pick up. And fun to play, easy to understand games that uh, anybody can. But they're still extremely challenging. They look simple, but you know they, they end up actually not being super simple. So they, you can return to them over and over again. I think all my games are challenging, more or less. <laughs> uh, oh yeah, oh yeah, especially a later one, Dark Castle. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's, a hard that's one. really brutal in the arcade. I made it even much, much easier, but it's still pretty hard, yes. <laughs> you should play that's it in, in MAME. You should play it in MAME and try to get to level 3 or 4. You will find out <laughs> how much easier I made it. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen it in the arcade, so I'll, I'll probably have to, um, I'll have to load it up on MAME and, and try it out. Yeah, I mean, the first level um, is easy, so but then it tries to get money from you. <laughs> the game is yeah. Well, that is the goal of, of most arcade, of games. arcade games. It's like, oh yeah, the first level is so easy. You guys, yeah, no problem. Then it's like, no, give me your quarters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so let's take a look at um, another sure. one on here. Um, Crash. Crash. Actually go that? to Cave 1K next because I think that was his first one too. So very Flappy Bird-esque type yeah. of game. Uh, one button? Oh, is it a yeah, one button? It, it is. Uh, am I moving? I'm moving forward, too. Oh. No, I'm not. I take that back. No, a one just a one button. button. So, right, yeah, right. so you picked games that would work within the constraints of, of 1K. Um, simple, but they can, you know, get challenging as it goes, goes on. I think, mm -hmm. the, does a cave get smaller in this? No, the bars get longer. The bars get longer. And there are variations where the bars are moving with the difficulty uh, switches and there are variations where they're either random or where they're always the same so you, that you can learn the pattern and see how far you can get with the pattern. Oh, uh, yes. Okay. Uh, I think the That's scrolling gets I, faster I sometimes... too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. 
that's sometimes I always neglect. I always forget about the difficulty switches. And that's one of the, you know, the big strengths of early Atari 2600 games, the classic ones, where they have like hundreds of variations. And some of them, you know, the default one maybe isn't always the most fun one. Um, where, you know, things are moving around more, like, or they disappear or things like that. And, um, and very clever programming to uh, make them all work. Where I like how do, how do you program this? You would pro do you program like the most varied version of it first? Like okay, I have to figure out how to make the bars move because making them not move is easy. Mm -hmm. So so making them mo a still bar is just a variation of a moving bar rather than the other way around. Yeah, I don't don't know exactly. Maybe I started with static bars. I I, I I'm pretty I'm not hundred percent sure, but. Basically, you have to position them uh, at, a, at, a, at some position. And so you have to come up with a position by a random generation. And moving them afterwards is pretty easy because you need a, a, a position where it starts. And in a loop, you ah. can slowly change it. It's not very, very, you don't need many bytes for this. So I think I, I came up later. And then you would just need the speed of the bar and yeah. the limits of vertical... Right movement yeah. yeah uh and as you can see it's another gravity game like like <laughs> Splat yeah i mean you saw yes. it in platform as well it was a gravity yes. game yeah, that's true so, and this is another gravity game i like gravity because it's so easy to code and it <laughs> it's really yeah. easy <laughs> so for gravity games how do you um how would you program the gravity do you use a table for no, you just put you, in the the amount of gravity and add have a counter for it. Yeah. Yeah, you you just simply add uh, or subtract um, speed from the speed the upward speed. You subtract every frame something. Right. And right. that's it. I mean, gravity is dead and, simple. And then add to when the button is pressed. Right. You subtract uh, gravity. Add thrust. And yes. whatever the difference is is the difference. Yes. Okay. And that, that's that's, that's the speed and, I, and that's it. And then I guess the rest is figuring out, does it feel right for this game? Like right. the gravity of that helicopter, is it too floaty? Or right. is it pulling me down to the ground and killing me too quick? Yeah. Yes, yes. And it has to work when it becomes harder. So it has to be a bit floaty or it has to be a bit hard in the beginning because else it would be too slow later on. Uh, because yeah. you have to, it has to move rather quick, but not too quick. Yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also yes. there's also some kind of damping included. You you may not notice it, but in, this, in thrust as well, there's some speed yeah. limit or an acceleration limit because else the game becomes too hard. You're overshooting right. always, so there's some damping when you it's you cannot you cannot really um, see it or notice it, but it's there. Else it would be that, really too hard. That makes sense, yeah, because otherwise you would accidentally hold the button and you'd just be flying off the screen instantly. Right. Yeah. There's a, a question from uh, Nathan Strom. Uh, do you find knowing how the 2600 works help you analyze how to play the games better? For example, how objects are spaced or how they have to move because of kernel limitations? <laughs> um maybe but i never thought about it i mean my own games of course because i know how they do how they work but other people's yeah. games i don't think so no no yeah i've never thought about games in that way either like thinking about you know how the atari 2600 you know draws things on the screen like i can like in um i guess you could like depending on how hitboxes maybe are drawn, like whether you're using hardware or software collision detection, that might come into a factor because I know the 2600 has very good um, hardware built in collision detection. Mm -hmm. Like it's on a per pixel, it's not a hitbox. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't think of any other instances where, you know, knowing the internals 
of um, the 2600 and how it operates would help you play the game? Uh, sometimes it could help you when you have something like the movement of the enemies is restricted to reduce flicker. So there are some yes. hor horizontal separations. Eh? So, so you have yeah, horizontal they, areas. Where they, where they that, can't cross over each other. Yeah, There's that some might. Games like that they keep to their own areas. Yeah, um, that might I've help. Played, I actually have played games like that and it has helped. It's like, I know that guy can't team up with that guy so if i shoot the guy that's just above me then the other guy can come down and get me mm -hmm. um yeah the, yeah that's an instance of it yeah oh for, for example demon attack comes to mind you you know it's yes. it's how it's programmed but you, you you know only the bottom one is shooting at you if you know that yes. you can easily go to the upper ones but that's not knowing how the tia works but knowing how the game works yeah that's more about the game, yeah, because that's not a limitation. They could all shoot or take turns shooting, but yeah, that's more of a programming thing. But I, but that's kind of, I guess that helps knowing sure. programming and and knowing how they programmed it, but not necessarily the twenty six hundred part of it being programmed. Do you want me to jump to another game? Yeah, we'll go to the third one now. On here. You have to switch controllers. Crash, no. crash and dive. It's a oh, paddle game. Oh. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, we the, don't have a paddle out. So we'll a paddle. <laughs> in the other port, you d you can leave the joystick in this port. It's it's in the other port, so no worries. Oh, it's in this port number two. Yes. Ah. That makes sense because you don't want people switching back and forth when they're doing the three-a-thon. Mm. Right. Well, you you scared the cat off. I know. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! Is this the right one? One second. Uh, that one's acting a little crazy. That I one's think, not working at all. I think. Let me just get this paddle working. Okay. Uh, it's not bad. At the moment, it's jump. Uh, it's, uh... There we go. Really? Oh yeah, okay. No, it seems to work. <laughs> I, I get it a bit delayed. In, in, uh, you see your screen right, yeah. five seconds later. Yeah. Uh, this is one of it. my very rare attempts with, to come up with an original idea because I'm not very good at original ideas. So uh, uh, yes, that w that's a very good question. It's like, do you like doing ports or is i guess it's more of a factor of coming up with ideas right right i have i have, I have some ideas in my mind but when i start programming i soon realize mm, no that becomes boring it's just technically <laughs> interesting but it's boring and so yeah i know the from the ports i know they work i mean that's a big advantage yeah you you don't have to Go for the details. You, you 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 can concentrate on implementing them, and you don't have to worry about hmm, do they play well or not. You see, with the stacks, yeah, the, the game, yeah, which blocks which is blocked for I think three four years. I don't know because I don't yeah. like it playing. It's it's not coming <laughs> around like I wanted to, and so I'm waiting for a better idea, and then I will go go back to it. Yeah, exactly. And that is one of my questions. We'll come back to that uh, mm -hmm. when we go to the stacks. But that is that is one of my questions. Um, yeah, it, it it is interesting. There's a lot of uh, original ideas out there and there's a lot of ports. Um, but coming up with a the right game balance and a fun idea is is a very big challenge. The button doesn't reset. Oh no, bad, bad Thomas. Shame on me. <laughs> <laughs> just for this game. Yeah, just for this game. The other ones do. That's funny. Probably run. Didn't do anything in this game? That's funny. Maybe it's not working. Um, I don't remember. <laughs> oh, maybe the button's not working. That could be it too. That could be it. Um, yeah, if you want to ask questions and get my attention, just put question in big capital letters so I can read it off. Or if you see one as well thomas um i've said it before and i'll say it again best electronic best electronics lifetime pots paddles are best no jitter ah, mostly mine are fine I've, I've never really had to do much 
Uh, once in a while I've had to open them up, but they seem to be pretty good. I probably need to grease them up. Um, so we're going to go on to the next one, which I think is an original idea of yours, which is Action Simon Says. That's from you. <laughs> I think so. I hope so. I'm embarrassing myself. Ah, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. The name is from you, but uh, the game is from me, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the name is from me? Oh, okay, yeah, that's probably why you don't recognize it. I had to call it something. I think you called it No Name, so I'm like, oh, let's, let's give it some name. Yeah, I had no name for it. And I think you started this one out as a programming exercise, or you were showing somebody something. Yes, so I... You bounce I, off the walls. In a certain press, order? Press the button, and you... It's like Simon says, you have to do that three times. Let's so move over. One, two, three, and then it'll oh, do it again. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Right. Somebody, uh, like, like in the stream, somebody asked me, um, how do you do this gravity, and how do you do the inertia things, and acceleration, and stuff like this? And... Biting the, the cat's biting the cable, I'm sorry. <laughs> Atari! Psst, psst. Come here, come here. Bad cat. <laughs> can you... Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Thomas. <laughs> so I explained it with a little demo, and um, which I then continued a little bit longer, looking for... came up with the idea to do uh, something like... Uh, what do I call it? Simon Says, huh? It's in, in, uh, yeah. It's, it, yes, it has a different name in Germany. But um, so I came up with the idea. I, it's very basic, but um, yeah, it could be made into an into a game. But maybe if there would have been another mini game challenge, I would have finished it and uh, made a real mm. game out of it. I even asked Nathan to design a nice enemy for me with heavy <laughs> restriction in space, and he came up with something. I don't think I implemented it. Mm. Uh, I wanted something which looked like um, the crystal enemy from Star Trek. There was a was an was was an episode where the, where, the, where they were attacked by some crystal um, structure. Uh, yeah, so I wanted something like this. So yeah. that's um, that was the idea. I think Nathan came up with something. I don't know if it was a crystal or something different. I have to look it up. I don't think this graphic is from him. Mm. He, will, he will know yeah. maybe better. He's in the stream. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, he hasn't said anything yet. Yeah, this is an like I've seen implementations of you know this type of game where it's you know the Simon says you have mm -hmm. to replicate what the computer does, but this adds the element of like action to it, which mm -hmm. is a very yeah. interesting element of Simon says where there's an enemy and. You have to bounce, and there's gravity, mm -hmm. or, or or thrust at least, and sometimes you're trying to do it right, and you get you bounce off another <laughs> another wall. So it's 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 interesting, yeah. So it's kind of a it's kind of a puzzle puzzle action game, and and those are those are really fun where you're trying to do something, but things are getting in your way of doing it. Like if it was just the basic Simon says, like up, down, left, right, it's like oh that's mm -hmm. that's a little bit boring. It's it's easy, or it's just memorization. But this adds that that special element to it. So it's and this is this is another original game of yours. Okay. Yes. True. True. Yeah. <laughs> it's technically a, a game. I classify anything where you can interact, and there's a goal as a game, as simple as it may be. Yeah. Mhm. Mm yeah, it is. Yeah, QB is puzzle action. Yeah, that's a, another great example of I Andrew Davies' game. I think I also had the idea to make it a two-player game, where one player alternative turns and one player plays the enemy, and the other one has to score or something like this. Ooh. Could could be fun, yes. That will add a lot, because I mean, I, like I always say, two-player games are far and few between, especially good ones, um, because I, a lot of whenever there's a two-player game, and I play it on the show or the programmers talking in the forums is like I. Ha the, the, the developer says, I, I haven't tested it. I have no one to play with. And it's like, oh, and I'm glad that I can do that <laughs> and yeah. test it out because they're usually so fun and, and there's not enough of them. So I always try and encourage people to, to make two-player games. 
so that you and somebody else can have have fun with them. I wonder how many two player only games have been made which are really fun. Um, mostly yeah. the developers I know doing it on their own or in collaboration but on not in the same place so there will yeah. be very few games which only work as two player. Only very maybe few. Only maybe when you don't come up with a good AI or however you call this 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 yes. thing. Yeah. So, but I think we are mostly doing our jobs as a single person in a single yeah. place. So, yeah. I, ne I never had yeah. a girlfriend who liked playing video games, unfortunately. So you're in a very lucky oh, no. position. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 wonderful. <laughs> I'd have to get the cats to play with me, and they're not very interested. They don't they don't seem interested in the games. He leaves the room all the time. <laughs> he does come back though. Um. So, uh, my question for this one: This seemed like it started out as a programming exercise rather than a game, but it's actually quite fun to play. Did any of your other games start out as programming challenges and then develop into something bigger? And I think you've kind of also already answered this because you usually go for ports. So it's very intentional when you're making a game. Um, but are, are there any other examples of where it kind of turned into something more where you're showing somebody how to program something? Um, no, not that I remember, no. I think this is the only yeah. one. Or maybe I can, I remember, or somebody else remembers, but I, I don't. Later on, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, okay, so we're going to jump to the next game. And I, I went back and forth in including this because I couldn't find a lot of information about what you did on it. I could only find that your name was mentioned. And sometimes it's not even mentioned on it it's the toy shop trouble mm. um game i and i'm so only what was your contribution to it I, I think we had a secret forum and i was part of the discussion of the game and maybe i came up with a little bit of code hints but that's all the the game was not done by me no i, I have done hardly any coding in it so i wouldn't oh. consider it a, as a game of mine so no some ideas, okay, so that's, maybe, yes, but not coding. Okay, that's that's why I was having a, lo a lot of trouble finding information about it. So we'll we'll skip that one, but you did contribute to it, like you've contributed to hundreds of other games, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, but then you need 10 more shows or something like this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, we'll stick to, stick to the big ones. Um, the next game is really, really interesting. <laughs> And has not been put out on cartridge, but has been threatened to put been put out on cartridge for a very long time, and mm -hmm. I've been waiting for it. Um, it's Ram Pong. Can you load it up? Mm. Sure. And uh, so it says, uh, I've written, this is an incredible accomplishment to make a game mm. completely in RAM, because the you see that post, that meme constantly all the time about the different consoles saying how much memory they have. And then the Atari 2600 says, I have no memory. And then always underneath somebody says, well, it has 128 bytes of memory actually, <laughs> plus other little things that you can store memory in. But um, but this game, not the title screen, <laughs> this the actual game is, is actually stored completely in the 128 bytes. Of RAM. Of RAM. Mm. All the graphics, all the the movement, the whole game, the scoring system, and it's incredible. And there was a number of other RAM games made. Uh, RAM Combat, RAM Defender, RAM Frog Pong, RAM Helicopter, RAM Race, RAM Sliding Puddle, Puzzle, RAM Tic-Tac-Toe. Um, and there was even a RAM Lisp Pong made, which is yes. the opposite of this game. Where it Everything. uses, it doesn't use any RAM. Any RAM at all. Okay. It uses lots of little tricks to store the information in other ways. But mm. it, if you take it into Stella and look at the memory, it's all zeros. And it stays zeros as you play the game. That's crazy. <laughs> Which is so funny that there's RAM Pong and the opposite and of RAM Pong. Anti-RAM Pong. <laughs> Anti-RAM Pong. <Yeah. laughs> 
Um, if they collided, they would cancel each other out. Um, <laughs> so yeah, is game. It I think I don't know the button or game select. It's not the button. Okay. You need two pedals, right? Oh, oh. pedals. It's pedal. Okay. What am I thinking? Oh, that would that would yeah. There. And, I think, and I think and I think now you need two player, to, then. and now you need the first port. Yeah. That makes sense. In, there we in, go. In port one, right? Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah, Good. One. And there we go. There we go. So this is an example <laughs> of no AI. <laughs> right. I don't think you could fit AI to no. <laughs> 128 bytes. No, I don't think so. No. Okay. Well, I can't. Um, so how much how much of a factor uh, comes into play uh, for making a game within co certain constraints when you choose a project for the 2600? Or is that a really big factor? Because obviously this one is one of the ultimate challenges. You have to press a button. No, there's no... Yeah. No? no. This one you have to reset. There was no space for anything to react. You have really oh, to yeah, load it again. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Uh, <laughs> okay. One game and you have load to... Load it one more time. We'll do it one more time. <laughs> you have to reload it. Eh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. It's okay. I can, can control can it? it with my foot, can I? Uh, no. No, it's not plugged in anymore. Oh. You have to use a paddle. The paddle? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, sorry, so we'll get back to the question. Um, uh, the challenge in making a game, <laughs> like fitting it into 4K or 2K or 1K, or in this case, the smallest possible thing you could put, do is fit it, it always into... Does this. Uh, 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 no, the just problem. give it a second. Give it a second. That bug, it's, it's been... Uh, Come on. It's been reported. <laughs> yeah. This bug in uh, in the I harmony hope, cart. I hope I find out what the reason is because this code is from me too. <laughs> oh no no. Okay, I'm gonna have to plug in the joystick temporarily. That's okay. It's a really weird bug. It only happens on the game itself. I don't yeah. think you have to reboot it into the joystick. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I have no idea, uh, but I had not really time to look into the code. It, I probably it's something really simple. I have to find out. Yeah. Up one, up one, grandpa. Oh, there you go. Too close to the screen. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now switch it back to the paddles. Yeah, this one I won't get mad at you for not putting in a reset. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you um, if, okay, if, so... if you give me some bytes, I will put it into no problem. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, a couple extra bytes. Yeah. I I asked the people on this uh, on the forum what 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 do you prefer, sound or reset? And people decided for sound. <laughs> so yeah, it's sound. Makes sense. Makes sense. Your sh um, your show wasn't there at this time. Maybe I, could, I would have done a silent version before you with reset. Oh yeah, there you go. Um, CD. Uh, C D D A S H W um, C D Oh that's what it's C D dash W. Uh, um, he says in theory you can take the card out of the slot while playing Ram Pong, but I don't recommend it. I did do that on a show. You can go back and watch that show because I'm not doing it again <laughs> to my system. This is Al's system, even more important. I'm not gonna do it to Al's system. Um, because it's it's possible to damage something, either the cart or the Atari, I'm sure, while you're Somebody said, no, it's fine, but it's probably best not to do it while it's on. Yeah, I mean, I, I have do, I've experimented with it, and I never ruined my console, but you never know. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and especially when it's not my stuff. But I have done it. There is video proof of me pulling out the cartridge, and it keeps playing. And that's the most amazing thing you could ever see on an Atari 2600, is removing the cartridge and still be playing the game. Yeah, this is the only way you can do this because it's not it's not accessing the card anymore. It's not getting more information. Right. So you were asking uh, a question about the challenge about space or something. I, I didn't get it right. Yeah. <laughs> how much awesome. how much of a factor is the challenge of making a game like trying to do it within certain constraints like 4K, okay. 1K or RAM? I, it depends. I mean 
for, for example, artwork, there was no factor. I mean, I wanted to make the game as perfect as possible, me and Nano Chess and so was Rust. Yeah, but sometimes you came up like in Jammed, you say, I want to fit this into 4K and as many puzzles. I want to fit the Swoops games, I wanted to fit them into 1K. And then, of course, that's that's a challenge. Huh? And like the 128 bytes here, that's the challenge. And then you want you want to have a game in it. At first, it was something like squash, I called it, um, where you play against a wall because it was only single player. And then you try to squeeze in as much as possible. I did the yeah. same with with John, who is not on the stream, I think, with Avalanche. Um, so he had right. the same. He wanted to put some stuff in it, and where I helped. So and, yeah. and it's really fun to find some bytes, and then you get a feature extra for free. <laughs> that's right, and I and I think that's where I run across most of your help, it in helping other people with their code is is the optimization. I always see. Oh, I've saved. A couple more bytes and or you know these loop routines or figuring out a trick with with uh, assembly code that uh, is a bit more optimized so and you I, only I can see you only see the tip of the iceberg there's a lot of go <laughs> stuff going on in emails or m private oh, yeah. messages and stuff like this chat whatever oh exactly um there's a question from d train he says semi semi-serious question you appear to be involved in so many conversations on Atari Age. Exactly how much time do you spend on Atari stuff each week? Too much. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Really, I, I don't know. I, I've never measured it, but uh, it goes on and off. There are weeks where I'm doing not much, that like just following a few conversations. Like this week, yeah. I was not in the mood to do any programming. And yeah. then there are I remember I, Boulder Dash, the title screen with the music. I was on vacation. I was on vacation and it was raining and mm -hmm. I couldn't do much. And so I was programming eight hours or 10 hours a day for a week or two. Wow. So you can imagine even Sundays and whatever. So that's yeah. different. But I would say on average, uh, no. maybe two hours or per day. I don't know. Yeah. I, can't tell exactly. Yeah, yeah. But definitely a lot of posts on the Atari Age forum, that's for sure. Yeah, but that's 20 years. I mean, it's almost 20 yeah. years now. And there are people who have done more, so I'm that's not true. on the top. Yeah, I calculated it out to three posts a day. So if you if you think about it that way, it's like, oh, that's achievable. But it's still a lot of posts. Over 20 years, three posts a day on average, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> When you stick to, um, when you stick on it and you have a lot of people you talk about and then it oh, yeah. sums up very fast. Yeah. Um, Nathan says Thomas helped a lot with optimizing Stay Frosty 2 that allowed us to add more levels. Yeah. So, and that's that's something that you you kept bring keep bringing up is like the op optimization of of level code to 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 squeeze more levels in and, and I mean that adds to the value of the game mm -hmm. quite a bit mm -hmm. uh, I think in, in, in Stay Frosty it was not level coding I think it was just general optimization because it was oh, one okay. of the very first games and now that they know the tricks but at that time I had to figure out some new tricks and uh, that helped mm. Quite a lot. You, you you just experiment. I mean, you in, in, this is an ARM game which is done with a C compiler, and right. so you ask, you think about what would a C compiler like and what would it not like, and then you try experiment <laughs> it. Does it get larger or not? And <laughs> yeah, soon you find yeah. out. Yeah? It's not it's not direct That's like true. assembler. In assembler, you can count the bytes yourself, and with a C compiler, it's, it's more tricky, especially when it sometimes you optimize something and it goes boom larger <laughs> and there's no reason for it to go larger at least no right. reason you can understand so it's uh, that's fiddling right because you don't know what it's translating it into behind the scenes what it how it's compiling it and what routines it's like oh i i divided by 15 well how does it handle that does it does it do it uh, the most optimal way possible or is it just 
a bunch of spaghetti code that somebody made. But See. in assembly, you know exactly. Yeah, Daryl remembers that I also helped in compression the level data. I, I forgot about it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, Kev Kelly says, I love reading about optimization tricks. And I do too, even if I don't understand them. <laughs> I go, that's like, that's amazing. You compress like these four lines into three lines and save two, you know, two cycles and two, yeah, this much data as well at the same time. I think dis discussed mostly is kernel time optimization. I mean, that's most important. There, it's hit some tricks, yes. So we're going to move on to something that is not a game again. Um, watch out, kitty. And this is has two names. It's called Thargon and also Elite Demo. Uh, it was worked on from 2009. Just press button. There. To 2012. It's a 3D wireframe rotation. Elite demo? Yeah. And and I just it's it's unbelievable. Oh, it's misbehaving a little bit here. But um so move the joystick around. Now this is Neat. incredible for an Atari 2600 to 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 do this. You can use a <laughs> button as well, yes. With a button you can do some more. <gasps> Oh, it's zooming in and out. Oh, whoa, scaling. Oh my God. So on uh, an NES, you need a special chip to do scaling, <laughs> but uh, on the Atari, no problem. I don't know which version you have, but there are more ships than one. So uh, I don't yes. remember. Do Is it the select, select button? I don't remember exactly. Maybe try the select button. Maybe it works. Oh, there we go. Yeah, so there's multiple, multiple oh, ships wow. in here. So the wireframe graphics in this is, uh, demo is unbelievable. Um, is is this something that could be practical in a game, or is this something closer to a demo where most of the resources are being used and to do what we see on the screen? Is this like something you could fire, you know, a missile at, or? Um, it's. I mean, it's. It's it's something like a frame buffer, like Andrew said a while ago, and I'm drawing lines into it. So of course I could draw more lines and add a missile or a shot, or something like this, or multiple ships. Yeah. But like an elite, it would slow down, of course. Yeah, I mean, that's an, you can also do it in in automatic mode. I think one of the difficulty switches makes it automatically animating or something like this. Oh, it's, no, no, it's fun. It's fun. <laughs> There we go. No, no, it was oh automatic. Yeah, oh, automatic. Neat. Very I'm not. Cool. I'm not. Maybe you can influence it, but I. I don't. I don't remember. Yeah, you can a little. Okay. You can get it to yeah. tumble in different ways. So, uh, Carl G says this looks completely impossible. <laughs> <laughs> and Esther says, please make a better looking battle zone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the line. I've, the, the line drawing code is. Uh, is um, it, it originates from I did some graphic extensions for the C64 previously and and later on for the PC for Turbo Pascal. And they had a very fast line drawing routine and this came handy and I used it here. Uh, the yeah. hardest part was bank switching because uh, I used a, you know, the the best bank switching I could find which existed back then. And had to do double buffering because you cannot do it. Yeah, you have to do double buffering. So you show one buffer and draw on the other one because you cannot run it at full wow. 60 frames per second. Huh? So, oh, uh, wow. yeah. Yeah, this is, I've, I've never seen a game with this kind of 3D scaling on a 2600. It is just unbelievable. It's, uh, it's out of control. Um, so, so yeah, that's why I asked the question: Can this be put into a game? And and you say, yeah, yeah. I course, mean, yeah. there's some very ingenious hidden line removal. I mean, you cannot see the hidden lines, but this is not from me. This is from the original game. The, the people who did Elite had a very cool idea how to remove the hidden lines with very little CPU time, uh, ah. which which I borrowed from them. I think you can show the lines with the other difficulty switch, or maybe the color switch. I don't know. Then you have no hidden line removal. Then you can. St I'm not sure if it works. Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, it draws in all the lines. Oh, I see. So it's like you're only with you're seeing just the lines you should be seeing, but if you switch it on, it's like a see-through ship. At right. That point. Right. You. Well, that's that's even more incredible, yeah. actually. <laughs> just to amazing. show. Amazing. Yeah, just to wow. show how it works. Mm. Yeah, you. I think you could do a game, and I think the the arm people could do really great Elite version on on the CC, on on the Atari because wow. that thing should do the drawings much much faster than the C64 was able to do. So yes, yes. of course it's feasible, definitely. Wow. Well, there you go. Somebody run with it. Go crazy. <laughs> Make a game. Yeah, either Elite or Battle Zone. People. Uh, yeah. Yeah, people. People are liking it. Um, oh, and thank you, uh, Katte Locks, for subscribing. Thank you so much. Um, so next up, because this isn't, you can affect it, but it's not a game, so you can't really play it. Well, uh, but it's unbelievable. I it. yeah. When I ran across this, I was just blown away. Yeah. This it is not like nothing else on the Atari, Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Yeah. I want. I wonder why you have these graphic errors on your console. I have no clue yeah. where they come from. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on I wonder if you reboot there. back into it if they're still there. Probably, but I'm not sure. Yeah, Ataris are f weird. <laughs> they're finicky. They're not all the. They're not all the same. Mm. Um, and also, this has S video out. It is modded. There's things that creep in if things are not done perfectly right, or mm. you know, um, it's it's interesting. No, this is not to, to answer CD dash. No, no, this is not using an arm. This is just plain CPU power from the 6507. Yeah, so imagine if it was using ARM. <laughs> It'd have a lot more time to do the background game logic. Yeah, yeah and, and more drawing, more enemies. I mean, you remember when the Targons came up in hyperspace? The game came down to really, really slow down. I played the C64 version, and it had like mm. two frames per second or something like this. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> So this next one uh, should be familiar to Andrew Davey. Um, <laughs> this is Boulder Dash. Um, this is an inc another incredible achievement by yourself and Andrew Davey to make this game because there's just so much going on in this. Um, a full screen of like sometimes hundreds of objects um, and, and scrolling backgrounds and what happened? I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> It'll come back. One second. Yeah, this game does draw too many lines, probably, because it, I think it draws 270 lines or 76 lines or something like this. Oh. Uh, yeah. and, and, and if it switches the number of lines, my frame meister goes, whoa, you switched kind of input, I have to readjust, and my TV has to readjust. So on a CRT, none of this matters. CRTs just go, yeah, whatever, I'll just spit it out. I don't care when you start and when you stop drawing, but uh, digital devices get a little bit upset. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say. Um, so, the technical achievement of Boulder Dash is incredible, and one of those games that uh, you would think would never be done on the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and the development time was was quite long. Um, so, what were the some of the biggest challenges in terms of programming? that you would need to accomplish to make something like Boulder Dash a reality? I think initially Andrew had the, the, the key ideas about um, how to keep the things alive. So he has, he, Andrew's idea is a, is a fundamental thing of this thing. So he, he made sure that, that you don't have to calculate each and every square, but only the elements which are at, at the moment alive. Um, right. So this was very tricky. The problem was the drawing was too slow and um, the game didn't play fast enough and I offered my help to make it faster. And so I started with peephole optimizations, really looking at the drawing routines, how to make the, the logic faster and that we optimized a lot of things into space and later on and into speed up of the thing so that it plays fast enough. Um, that that was a big challenge, but I think what Andrew came up with the idea was also really, really important. And yeah, 
what what all what else did we do? Yeah, I mean we had some scheduling engine in it. I think it was also Andrew's idea. And that's, the, that's one of the most amazing things is the like everything doesn't happen all at once. No, it's like every frame. It's like oh, I'll do this this frame, or and then I'll do this this frame. But mm -hmm. it doesn't have to happen all at once. And and I guess that's the benefit of. Um, well, this is a real time. There's enemies that keep moving even when you're not moving. It's not a, you know, per move kind of game. It's it's it is an action game. Mm -hmm. So it's yeah, it's it's unbelievable. But but you know, I, I could reuse stuff from my from my old games. For example, the scrolling is stolen from Thrust. So it's uh, I, I, I always called it delayed scrolling. I don't know a better term for it. You, you, it doesn't scroll one by one when the player moves, but he, when he reaches a certain boundary. So um, so this this is something. But but that's just little bits you can reuse. Mainly mainly ideas, not code. I mean the code is usually done from scratch because every game is somehow different. Uh, yeah, Daryl Spice Jr. was talking about that the other day. He was gonna use one of his games as an example for the programming tutorials for cdfj or something and he's like well i can't use that one because the coding is going to be so specific to this game mm -hmm. that nobody else, it's not going to be useful for anybody else to to use in their games right um and and yeah it's, it's smart to use that kind of delayed scrolling um in thrust and this game because the 2600 when you're using playfield can only do four pixels at a time anyway so you can't really achieve super smooth scrolling horizontally no 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 we have to do jumpy scrolling but it looks less jumpy when it moves faster and andrew is chatting yeah. also he's, he's, he's reminding me yes we did cycle counting a lot of cycle counting that was uh, really really important because you, you you check the clock how much time do, do i have left and then you check, yep. oh, is it enough time for this subroutine to run at worst case so that that you not uh, lose sync because you have to fit. If, when you're too late, then you lose sync and then you would see it's on like, the game. It's like, oh, it's time to draw the screen again. Sorry, yes. we don't have time to do this next, right. next time. But I guess as long as you always have enough time to do something, then you can progress and you know save something else for later yes and i think that that's that's smart because i think a lot of people think of uh 2600 programming as i have to get everything ready for the next frame absolutely everything and maybe that's not always the case maybe you have time to delay something for two frames and it's not really important yes that's 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 one one idea you can do it statically but for example, you do something only every second frame. Right? I mean, you can say, uh, I do this only every second frame. You can push, Tanya, but I'm out yeah, of sync. I'm trying to remember how this, this thing moves. <laughs> Just push. <laughs> the, um, the butterfly. But oh, don't, don't, That's don't. all I was thinking about. <laughs> Just don't oh, let it out. <laughs> Yeah, don't yeah. Do that. it doesn't need to come out in this in this uh, level. You're done. You're um, done. So, That's exit. Yes. So how were the program duties um, on Boulder ba Boulder Dash divided up between yourself and Andrew Davy? I think engine engine wise, it was a lot of Andrew. I did uh, did the kernel. I did graphic optimization. I did the sound, uh, title screen. Um, I think the deco decoding or other the, the encoding decoding of the caves of course because that's compression <laughs> <laughs> your favorite <laughs> yes and andrew made sure that all the things work together the the yeah i did yes i did the kernels mostly yes the graphics kernel the, the score kernel at the top and i did i think i did all the graphics maybe andrew did a few too but um the graphics or the play field pixels are from me right Nice. Oh, and Carl G. 
Kaji's the cool background cast. flashing. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe I think this could have been Andrew's idea. I, I don't exactly remember who came up with this with the Starfield. But Carl G has a very very interesting question. I think Andrew has a lot to ask to, to add to this too. Oh, of course, yeah. Of definitely. course, we had a lot of disagreement, and you can see <laughs> something in the menu from the game that's written that's written down. Um. For example, we discussed about colors long and, and uh, the uh, you would say it's details, yeah? But if you invest so much time into a game, you don't want it second best. Huh? You want it best, as good as it gets. And then, and we both are very, have a very strong personality and very strong opinions. And we both know, <laughs> yeah? We both know what we want. And we will both have, exactly. I mean, it's not that one of us is better than the other one. Everybody is, we are both developers who know their, their job. So the yeah. discussions were very long and going back and forth a lot. <laughs> Cause. And, and, I'm, and I'm sure both the ideas are very good, but you both have like, no, I think this is better and you think the other person thinks that's better. And that's going to come up with any, any kind of collaboration. Um, you have to, you know, Make concessions or compromise or or find a third method, you know, that incorporates both the ideas or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or but, you split the task. You say, this is my yes. area and this is yours. Huh? Yes, oh. that's right. That's a very good way. Delegate and separate and then you don't cross cross over those two things. Yeah, and, you know. but this only works so much that only works so much there will always be things where where we interfere or more i mean yeah. for example when you have the gameplay and one pe person is doing the gameplay of course the other one must agree how the game plays i mean yeah sure <laughs> oh yeah yeah that's going to be a core element and he called you a stubborn bastard <laughs> i know and i'm sure and yeah andrew davy says you're a stubborn bastard so yeah, yeah. He's, yeah, he's Australian. You have to get used to his humor, and then it's okay. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see. A question from Captain Classic. Oh, D Train. Question from D Train. You worked mostly. You've worked with most of the current crop of heavy hitter, heavy hitters homebrewing uh, for the twenty six hundred today. Is there any? one that you have not worked with that you would like to work with in the future? Or is there any one that has dropped out that you would like to return, see return to the scene? Um, yes, dropped out. I mean, Manuel has gone. Manuel Rochka or um, Pollock or Cyborgos has gone. I, I really would like to have him return to the scene. And there's some other people who left lately because um, or about to leave because of the... Um, success of the arm games which overshadow a bit the other games and people mm. i mean i can understand if, if you're just playing games you, you're not interested in how the tech behind it but for the developer yeah. um who knows the difference Very important then then yeah it feels a bit embarrassing not not embarrassing frustrating that that um that people yeah, this is so great, and they are great. I mean, the, the games from John and Daryl, they, they are really, really great. But yeah. the people, they set a benchmark which is very, very, very high. And yeah. I can see that people get frustrated and say, look, if people expect every game to be like this, or just a simple simple game. Yeah, if for, for a simple game, they are saying, okay, this is a simple game at which I like because of the gameplay, but it's not a full-blown game full-blown games yeah. have to look that, like the arm games that's a bit frustrating i mean yeah. I, I did artwork when oscar started doing it um when i entered i wanted artwork we come to it later um, um i wanted artwork to look like an arm game or look very very good um, just to prove that it's still possible um to do a game to compete there the work you have to put into it is really, really much, much higher than you when you can do a high-level language programming. It's, mm. I mean, there's a reason why high-level language was developed because to save time. I mean, yes, of course. Yeah. But it's a different game from then on. Yeah, and there's and there's the 
the part of challenging yourself to make a game that doesn't use um, the ARM processor. And, you know, there's different philosophies about making games. Mm -hmm. Like, well, you know, you want to stick with the original hardware, what was available at a certain year. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's everybody has a different idea of what, how to make a game. Yes, yes, of course. Um, yeah. And so I would like to see these people come back. Uh, we are frustrated because of this. Because, I mean, yeah. I'm still here, and I'm not planning to do <laughs> arm games on my own. I'm helping with arm games. Yes, of course. Uh, I want every game to be as good as as it gets. But I don't see myself doing arm games very soon. Maybe if I come with a come up with an idea or find a game which I really really want to do and which is absolutely impossible without arm, maybe I would change my mind. I don't, but I don't. At the moment, no, no, I have no plans. Yeah, yeah. Um, can you and Captain Classic asks, can you share with us your developer setup for making 2600 games? What tool chain you're mm. using, like DASM, Visual Code, Visual Studio Code, or just a plugin, or just Notepad plus plus with a plugin? Like, what what software do you use to develop? It's simply it's it's simply a text pad, a text editor. <laughs> Which, right. which you can program a little bit. It could, you can make it execute a batch file, for example. And most importantly, it can catch the output. And if you double click on an error line, it jumps into the code at this. Because it mm. throws out an error where it's line number and this thing gets the line number and you can jump to it. And since coding is mostly, oh, I have an error. That's whatever, you, you know, so it's most of the time you're fixing bugs. Um, right, so it's you don't, really, you don't really... need anything fancy then. Yeah. Um, so what tools do you use for graphical editing, for graphics? Uh, paper. Pen and paper. <laughs> Gra graph paper with little squares? <laughs> yeah, something. Maybe, sometimes I use an Excel sheet so that the cells can have the right size in aspect ratio. That's why it let, that right. it looks like... Yeah, I mean, it's so sense. simple. It's so simple, the graphics here, so why? Andrew says play level M. Level M? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't play much Boulder Dash, so <laughs> I'm, not a great, I'm not a great Boulder Dash player. Okay. Up to M. All right. <laughs> we'll see. Um, that, yeah, because this is a benchmark cave. Uh, so, it's, oh no. it shows how much the engine Step can it. handle. <gasps> oh, yeah. So it shows off a lot of lot of what this can can do. Uh, and problem. another question about your development. Um, oh, what are your favorite tools for development other than Stella and or Harmony plus VCS? And also, do you develop mostly on the Stella, and then take it over to a Harmony card? Like, what's the process? Yes, yes. Usually, uh, maybe if the kernel is something special, like in, in my Invaders game, then you have to do a lot of testing on, on, on real hardware because you, you cannot be sure that Stella gets everything. Uh, it, it, at least, and now it's really, really close, but b back then it was not that close by far because right. a Christian, a Dirty Harry, did, did a new um, TIA implementation, and that's really, really close to what we know. Yeah, there are still some quirks which we don't know. Some things happen and come up, but it's really, really close. And um, but usually that I do coding with Stella. I mean, I, for example, Thrust. When I did Thrust, I had no way to test it on my console, so I sent it over to Eckhart Stolberg, the developer of Z26, the emulator before before Stella, and he tested it for me. So, <laughs> wow, <laughs> that's a long roundabout process to make sure your game is working. <laughs> yeah, no, it wasn't wasn't that bad. I mean, it, it worked. So that was it. <laughs> well, the kernel is the kernel is nothing special. There's a question from uh, Dianoid. Um, your experience with negotiating with IP holders, and it doesn't have to be specifically Boulder Dash, because um, Andrew is answering a bit of that in the chat but say other games because you do a lot of ports like um what is your experience reaching out to other 
other game developers about their game and making it on the 2600. I think uh, Boulder Dash was the only one where we really negotiated with IP holders, but I had some conversation with Atari for the flashbacks. Um, they wanted they wanted thrust on the flashbacks, and I said yes, okay, I, I can give you the rights. <laughs> but uh, and then we started negotiating, and then they came up with their lawyers, and they yeah. demanded exclusive rights for thrust. So I should hand over everything to them. Oh, and oh I told them, and I told them, no, I won't do this. Yeah. <laughs> and then it was done. I mean, the, the, these these big companies are not flexible. They have yeah. some rules, and that's it. Um, yeah, they want to control completely from start to finish, and they want you out of the picture. They're just like, hand it over. Yes. Yeah, and I've I've experienced that in in film yeah. as well, and you know, it's a it's a common a common thing when making making stuff they, and working with bigger companies. They they just want to control everything, which, which of course, you know, goes against the ethos of, you know, open, open source coding and yes. you know, making it available, say, for the community on cartridge, etc. Yes, yes, I would never do this. I mean, a first star software was also very, like like Andrew says, they were very, very protective of their IP. I think they have to be. Um, BBG's the, the new rights holder seems to be a little less stressed, but we will, but that's only the first impression. We will find out how how it turns out. I mean, yeah, you never know um, the, <laughs> because the so laws far, are so good. yeah the laws are it, complicated and it's international and lawyers have no clue about our scene and we have no clue about their their ideas. Yeah. It's complicated. I mean, I, I, I don't like doing this, but it has to be done in case of Boladesh, it has to be done. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of a special, special case. You know? Yes. Very special. <clears throat> okay. We're going to move on to Star Castle Arcade. Okay. Now. Just hold on one sec. <laughs> hold on. Okay. I don't think this is going to work, but that's okay. She wants to get these butterflies exploding. I, I I remember doing this, James, but I really don't. Yeah, nope. now I'm dead. That's that's fine. We did get to M. We were playing M at one point. We were, yeah. I think you were playing because... I don't think I made it up to M, but I was playing M. You were playing M, yeah. It's a problem when you... You, you, you're playing a game that has been that's beloved by many people <laughs> oh but boy neither of us well you played it but i, I never really played and you're not dash. like great at it no that's that's a that's challenging worse. position yeah. where everybody's yelling at you yeah. do it better do do it this do way it better <laughs> yeah um so this is a, a another collaboration yeah um this one's with uh chris walton cdw is in the chat today nice um i'm guessing it's him is called CD W. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I think so too. Um, what, what game? Star Castle. Oh, Star Castle Arcade. Okay. Um, and I think you have to pick the first one. If not, we'll, we'll reboot find it. Out. <laughs> oh, it worked. Yeah. There's something, something different. I I didn't understand. Like oh. there's a bin and a CU, and I can't load up the bin in. Uh, the on Stella, and I can't load up the bin in on the Atari 2600. So, what is the bin for then? And then you can uh, only load up the CU version. I, I, the CU version is um, the one which which you need for the harmony card because the bank switching is uh, special because you can save uh, the score on the card. Oh, that's that's the thing which which we, it basically is a pure Atari game. No arm or something, but the the, switch, the saving of the high score is not on the save key, but on the card directly. And okay. pre previously, I think Stella only wanted a bin version, and so there's a bin version. Oh, I yeah. see. Okay. But this is this is a collaboration, but a different kind of collaboration because it's a sequential collaboration. Oh, okay. Basically, the game was all done when I started. Um, oh, it, really? Yes, it. Yes, Chris had done the game. Yeah. Um, but but I, when I contacted him and had some ideas how to improve it, because uh, I think when I came into it, you had not much space to move around 
vertically. It was very um, little space vertically, and this game needs space. And so right. I came up right. with some ideas how to increase the space. Um, and okay, I had some ideas, and and Chris had to drop out because he was come became a father. Mm. So um, I. I worked on my own, and it turned. And while I worked on my own, I, I changed a lot of the gameplay. I tried to make it closer to the arcade. Uh, I, I played a lot in, of in, of the game in, in Mame and tried to figure out what was different and how this thing works. And so we changed. Or I changed a lot of the game uh, as it was. And um, originally, I think Chris started because there was this other version. The the, yes. the famous other one, um, <laughs> and and yes. it was yeah it was stupid idiotic thing this this guy was doing. I, nobody understood it, and and people were really angry at him. Um, <laughs> and he wanted to sell it for I think thirty two k or something like this. Um, one yeah, single he made copy. One, one copy of it, and yeah, yeah and what. It. And wanted to sell it for hilarious money. Later on, he changed his mind. But Chris started, and I think at this time I was also thinking about making my version, but I never got forward. Um, mm. Chris did it, so he made his version, and I later on joined. And uh, ah. as it turned out, his the other version is hardly playable. It is uh, right. it is okay, yeah. And it's much yeah, smaller. So not, not really worth thirty-two thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, collectors. I don't know how collectors tick. For a collector, of course. <laughs> Neither yeah. do I. I've so <laughs> um, they pay enormous money for something like Air Raid or something like it's, which is not a good yeah. game. But from collectors' <laughs> point of view, it's great. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Exactly. Um, it's incredible that the the enemy turret and the shield around it is completely drawn with one player character. I don't know if people realize that. That whole centerpiece, except for the little bullets that are circling around it, those those little missiles, is drawn at 30 hertz by one player character. It's, yeah, but it's this is Chris Kernel. Yeah, Chris can oh, tell okay. you. Yeah, the kernel, Chris, he said, I wrote, every, rewrote every line of your code. I think everything outside the kernel was touched, at least by me. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Uh, but with the kernel itself was Chris. That's not me. Okay. Because I was going to ask you about Flickr and how you feel about Flickr. I'm sure you still have an answer. But mm. yeah, because this game does have a, a 30 hertz Flickr and you can barely tell. It's it's really well done. It's, it's very, very not really noticeable because it's also on separate lines. It's not flickering on the same line. Um, it's, uh, so it's how do you feel about flicker in games? Yeah, of course I try to avoid it, but um, if you do it, there are multiple ways to do it wrong. I mean, if you can you can reduce the, the, the way it flickers by distributing the flicker or by by making the flicker not stick out. For example, if, yeah. if you have an object uh, which sometimes flickers and sometimes not, then it's sometimes better to make it permanently flicker because then, the yes. then it doesn't change. Um, yeah. The hard stuff of flicker for a programmer is you can't do collision detection with hardware anymore. And this right, really, you have to do software collision detection then. Yes, and this really changes the game. I mean, I, I'm doing uh, Space Invaders at the moment, and I have to switch to software co detection now because I started. I have to flicker the missiles and bombs. Right. And this is quite some work to do, and changes a lot. Yeah, because what you're doing is already very intensive in uh, Space Invaders. That's for sure. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, have there? Well, that's been answered kind of already. Um, like I was gonna ask, have there been games that you'd like to make, but the twenty six hundred is not up to the task? Um, and then you kind of answered that in the arm question. That well, you might use the arm if there was a game that wasn't up to the task with just using the 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 basic six five zero. 
Yeah. Like I, re I remember a racing game from the C64 that was yeah. called Revs. It was a really, really realistic, the first really realistic racing game. It was, I think it was racing Formula 3 cars or something in, in circuits in Great Britain. And I really loved it because it was, was really feeling like you were racing. And I was crashing all the time and it was brutally, <laughs> brutally hard, but it was realistic. Uh, it felt realistic. Right. And you, uh, you like the realistic gravity of games, so I can understand that. Yeah. This would be some game I would like to do, or something like this. And, and I like the Sentinel. I don't know if you know this game. It's about absorbing energy from 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 space, and uh, there it's a 3D game where there's Sentinels on top of hills who are watching watching your player and and must not find him, and you have to teleport from one place to another using energy. It's really awkward. Oh concept. no, I don't know that one. Yeah, the, that it's, sounds interesting. It's called the Sentinel, but it needs three D. It needs three D, and I cannot uh, see if it working on the on the Atari. <laughs> well, you have a three D engine going already. Maybe yeah, maybe. but it needs more complex though. Yeah, it's it's really it also needs some color, and uh, it's really hard. I don't think it it's feasible. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a question from Cafe Man 2D. Uh, are playfield graphics used in this game at all? I don't think they are, are they? No, I don't think so too. There's no playfield. Yeah, I think your character is a player, the center is a player, and uh, those might be balls, missiles. Something like this, yes. But yeah, I uh, know. I are at blue, least... so it's possible. You, yeah, at least in uh, in the main kernel, not, and in the title screen, not. Maybe in the high score list, I don't know. I don't think so, no. Right. And the, the, the high score and and the title, some of the title looks really, it looks like vector graphics. Um, oh, it's beautiful. Where it's, it's, it's uh, brighter in the corners, where the two intersections of the vectors meet, and it's just, it's gorgeous. It reminds me a lot of Vectrex and the I look of the Vectrex. I think that was Nathan's idea. Maybe he can confirm it? it. It was there when I came to the project. It, it is done by using Flickr and overlapping the Flickr pixel. So where the corners right. are, both elements are, are flickering. Very clever. Very, very clever. Yeah. Like oh, you can see it all here, and it, it just looks so much like Vector it Graphics. It looks so good. It's inc yeah. Incredible idea. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a question from uh, Dianoid. Do you ever consider making games for other Atari systems like the Atari 7800? No. Nope. It's just nope. a different beast. I think you answered that earlier with the, the, the frame buffer. It's just not, in, not interesting to you. You like racing the beam. Yes, or, or something which is really technically challenging. Yeah, I mean, if it's aus outside racing the beam, then it has to be something special. And ev everything... Like the back tracks. Yeah, maybe, yes. But um, I, I, it, for, for me, it would, it would feel like I'm cheating on my own um, standards. <laughs> I mean, and, and for, for example, all my other games would feel pale because right. I, I invested so much time into Boulder Dash and now I'm yeah. using a, 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 a chip. Why? Yeah, okay, then I can do it in, in, in maybe half the time or even less. So it's not, it's not nothing special anymore. Yeah, yeah, that that's true, I, and I don't know. The twenty six hundred is just such a special machine, um, and the challenges it presents and the opportunities. The, the games you can make on it are sometimes more advanced than other systems that are put out later. Like there's just things you can do, and and the look of it is so so unique and different. I just I just love it. Um, yeah, we all we all adore the hardware designers from back then. All the developers. I mean, sometimes we hate them. For example, the Playfield Pixel. Why not a few bits more? Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> 20, 20 bits. Come on, please. Yes. Twenty bits. Yes. That's it's torturous. Give us like eighty and replicate the eighty and give us all the pixels. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, yeah. Nightmare. That's it. <laughs> that's what makes it unique. You know. Right. <laughs> 
Um, so we're going to move on to three dots next. I always mispronounced this at the beginning when I first played it. I called it three dot S or mm -hmm. something, but you corrected me quite quickly on that. And it's a puzzle game. You'll love Yay! it. It's really, really fun. Um, so this is um, available in the Atari Age Store. Most of your games are available, which is great I that the Atari, that Atari Age um, keeps keeps the games in the store. They're not most of them are not limited. Um, you can buy them forever as long as somebody's buying them. I'm guess I'm guessing, and and he is able to keep stock. And this title screen is it's incredible. Gorgeous, yeah, the Mondrian. incredible. <laughs> and look at it fade away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my God. Okay, yeah, so I'll just explain to it to you. Like. I have, but I can't remember now. So. Um, you match up numbers, zero and zero to go together. Okay. And also the one dot and the two dot go together to make a zero. What am I controlling? So you, if you press down, yeah. everything will go down and combine down. Oh, yes, yes, yeah. yes. So that, that's the basics. Yeah. Um, so the game was inspired by 2048 and an iOS game uh, threes. And there seems to be um, an enormous amount of variation in the styles of games you make, like if and that you work on as well. Like one after the other, it's like that's a completely different game than this one. And that's a completely different game from the next one, and 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 this is another, another puzzle game, just like Jammed, but but it's a very different type of puzzle game. Mm -hmm. So what what is the main motivation when you choose to work on a game? Like, does something just go, yeah, that just speaks to me, or... Right, right. I mean, for here, for example, here I, I saw two, 2048, and I liked the game, but it was a bit too simple and too repetitive, and um, it was missing some. And I read about it, and somebody mentioned threes from, from, from iOS, and looked it up, and I, I, it was very, very minor difference in the gameplay, but that made made a huge difference how the game was played and how you have to play the game and how you you, you can manage to get high scores. In in 2048, you it it usually is enough to press down and right or down and left all the time and you get really really good scores. Yeah? And here you have yeah. to really to re really think and and plan your movements. And I really liked the idea. It was very new, very unique. And yeah, okay, I started thinking, how can I implement it on the on the Atari? Um, because the problem is with the colors and, and the big letters or, or digits. Yeah. There you have huge numbers. And um, I said, okay, I cannot do this multi-digit numbers and multiples so i have to come up with something different so i came up with the idea okay i do just one two three and so on and it works i mean it it works out and um, but the kernel is still tricky complicated i think it's the only game where i'm using the timer the, the, the internal timer for drawing for for do as an index in the in the kernel loop so it's 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 a I, there's an um, a, um, single single clock timer or eight clock yeah. timer I don't know which one I'm using, and this one I'm using as an index because I had no CPU time left. So it was really challenging to d get this kernel working. Ah. Uh, and and after the kernel, yeah, I mean you know how the game plays and you have to implement it. That's uh, straightforward later on. That's true. Yeah, it's very striking looking. It's it's beautiful. Like yeah. even on the dots, it has a little see-through part where it, it kind of gives a shine to the mm. to the. Um, so do you generally try and do your own graphics and sound in your own game uh, as, as much as you can, I guess. The simpler ones, yes, but the bigger ones. I mean, you know, Nathan is all over it in in, yeah. in, in oh, the yeah. games, <laughs> and um, but for exa for example, Boulder Dash. I try to, to do the graphics and it because they are low res, so I don't think Nathan would have in enough space to do some of his magic there or a lot of it. And so, right. but but if it comes to detailed graphics, you need something, somebody who is an artist who really knows how to do it. But for mm -hmm. simple games, I mean, I, I remember in Thrust, I, I, I was 
I remember I was uh, going by train for some hours and I was penciling down how to rotate this ship and make it look convincing in all directions. And it, I, I, it took me several attempts until finally, finally found out something that looks reasonable. I suppose <laughs> I suppose Nathan could have done it in, in 10 minutes or something like this, but... but um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Like I'm working on a, a homebrew of my own, finally. Um, and it's a port of a game, but I'm porting out, uh, it's a C64 game. And I have to, you know, adapt the graphics to make it work on an Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. And it's very challenging if you're not a graphic artist to make it look good and make the animation look good. So, yeah, it's a, it's good to have a Nathan around, but <laughs> but you got to you got to at least try try and do it on your own to see if you can see if you can make it. Yes. Uh, uh, so here, I have a question. Go ahead. Yeah, and here the look I I, um, I I saw the original look of the threes game and I liked it, but I thought I'd do something different. And I'm a fan of Mondrian. I like Roy Lichtenstein, and they are doing these colors. And uh, so I tried some to do it, give it some look like this. I also wanted to use a font from this period, but the people didn't like the font, so I used a, a nicer rounded font. But um, right. yeah, so yeah, yeah. Esmeralda says it's very pleasing to the eye. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the color palette, and and the size of it too. Like it's very very big and striking. Um, question from D Train. What would you like to see more of in the current homebrew scene? I'm not sure that what that's referring to. Maybe the type of games or could be anything. What would you like to see more of happening? That's a very generic question. I don't know how, <laughs> what it... Because there's a lot of stuff happening all the time. Yes. I the... mean, what do I need more? More quality games. But you have a lot of them already. There are so... a lot of good games out there. Yeah, more people like you who are playing the games and showing how they're playing it. So that's, yeah. that's something. More reviews in the store, more feedback. Right, yes. Just just more feedback in general, because I guess this can count as feedback. More appreciation, more not just thanks for the game, but like saying it out loud, thank you for the game. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not the thank yous. The thank yous... Mm, come a bit easy and because people who buy mm. something or praise something they don't help much most of what really helps is people who are complaining because then <laughs> you're That's learning true, from it, your mistakes yeah i mean and, and we try and do that on the show too is i mean we play a lot of work in progress games yeah. on mm -hmm. the show yeah I've and seen. that's part of the whole thing is at the end of playing it and at the end of the show we say you know this part's good this may make it better or try and it's like oh this can add another element of gameplay to it mm -hmm. and it's really nice seeing the developers take those suggestions sometimes sometimes they ignore it of course because it's not a good it's not what they want to do but to implement it and it, and the game does get better and it's really amazing to see to play it again afterwards and go oh wow mm -hmm. it, it worked <laughs> Yeah, I, I come up and do the same. When I watch people developing, I come up with my own ideas and I had a lot of ideas. And sometimes I had ideas which make the developers starting from scratch or starting recoding large parts of the games. And I, sometimes I came up with ideas which made the game stall at the end. So I feel a bit, <laughs> feel a bit oh, uh, no. guilty. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, that would make me feel guilty too. Uh, yeah. But I always try my best. I'm... Yeah, Kev Kelly says, I love the feedback. I found it very helpful. Even have a surprise because of you guys. I don't know what that means, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's fun giving it's fun giving feedback and seeing the feedback take take shape Yeah. as well. Um, so we're going to move on to the next game, which is The Stacks, which is quite an interesting, mm. quite an interesting story. Or at least an interesting background to it. I haven't looked at the chat in like uh, uh Carl G says, your <laughs> zero-page homebrew channel feedback has been invaluable to me at times, too. Uh, well, that's really, it's really nice to hear that. Because yes. we enjoy playing the games. Well, yeah, that's the fun part is just playing them, really. I need some light. 
sure. Yeah. yeah, you're getting pretty, pretty glowy. Oh, there you go. <laughs> That's better. How late I think. is it there right now? Must be uh, like 10, 10, 10 20. Oh, okay. Ooh, got it. <laughs> quite, quite a, quite a time difference for yep, sure. Put it up. Which one? Sorry. The stacks. The stacks. Oh, that's right. Probably under. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Um. So, this. Yeah, you can start it. Um. So this is based on the book Ready Player One, mm. not the movie. The book, and um, because the game came out to promote the book, the original release of of this game, and um, and we've we've played this and talked about this extensively mm -hmm. on Zero Page Homebrew because we wanted to we wanted to give feedback because you were you were like there's something missing there's there's something more that this game needs uh, and it also needs game uh, balancing and stuff. Um, Maybe you can give a little uh, short rundown of how you got involved in this game. I know you talked with, like, looking on the Atari Age forums, they they talked about it and they presented it, and then you started giving feedback to them and talking. But how did you, like, get kind of more officially involved with this game? I don't even remember how I got officially involved. That's cool. I just had the ideas, and I think... It, Probably I asked them if they would mind, and no, they said no. Go ahead and do it. I think that was how it how it started. I really don't <laughs> remember. I had some ideas, and and I and wanted to make them into this game and to make it bigger game and and and, and a long lasting game, not only one off to get to the to the top and get the get the QR code and that's it. And and yeah, you added quite a bit to it like almost infinite levels and it just exponentially gets bigger and bigger and bigger and um johnny wc john shampoo asks is this game for sale at atari age i've always wanted to play it but wanted to wait until the final release i mean i i mean i can answer that but um the original game is available for everyone um the one you're working on has not been put out um for download yet mm -hmm. um Maybe you yep. can speak to where it is in the development right now and maybe what you're trying to get accomplished with the game before um, making putting it out for sale, even if... Can you even put it out for sale? I don't know. I mean, I can put it out for sale. There's no legal reason or restrictions. What I want is to make the game more fun, less repetitive. At the moment, it's too repetitive. I have for what, years now, an, an idea how to um, uh, add a third dimension to it. Like I, I wanted to add passages, passages into the trailers. Uh, so it's a bit like the Scorpion level in, in, in Pitfall, where you can do shortcuts. Mm, and yeah, it, it turned out quite complex. And um, I had some ideas, and it didn't work out. And so that's where I'm stuck. Yeah, mm. <laughs> Albert is yeah. a stack. Yeah, he has a ton of offset printed boxes for it for years now, sitting somewhere. Oh, oh no. <laughs> well, yeah. at least he's ready, I guess. <laughs> yeah, keep them on standby, Al. <laughs> Eventually, I will finish this. Yes, that's that's my plan, and uh, hopefully sooner than later. Yeah. I mean, it, it's it is very fun and very challenging as it is. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of lot of neat, really neat things in it. But I mean, you have to be satisfied with it, right? Yes, you, yes, you that's the problem. Say, I, I like this game that I'm putting out. Right, that's the problem. I have to like it, and before I don't like it, I will not put it out. <laughs> yeah, because it it has your name on it, right? Right. And, um. Pe people say the last five percent of a game takes the longest time and is the hardest. Sure. Um, can you can you break down how much time you think you spend like developing a game or thinking of the idea of the game and then developing programming it and then polishing it like maybe generalize your process of of making a game well, it's it depends on the game i mean um yeah. for example in artwork which i remember very well there was a lot of time spent into polishing the game 
I mean, we did the kernels twice. I've once I, Oscar did one kernel and then I did new one and everything basically then changed and Nathan came up with amazing graphics and uh, I made a lot of space for these graphics and which took a lot of coding. Mm. What, what takes a lot of time is really polishing. The, the kernel itself usually is almost the first thing you do because then you know uh, how the game works and you can program around it. Um, but to make the game really good, there's a lot of play testing, like it plays well, there's a lot of debugging, bug testing and checking. Uh, so, pff, what does I... Yeah, that's that was a contest of the original Stax game, yeah. The, this game oh, was yeah. part and you could win a DeLorean. <laughs> that's right. If yeah, that's, yeah. If that's well, a win, I, mean, you I can, don't know. You can go reference the other um, episode that we did on the stacks for like all the background info. We went pretty deep into it. Yeah, another thing is Robot City. I mean, uh, I did the 1K version for the minigame combo. And then, then I started with a bigger one, which was abandoned uh, for 13 years or something, or 15, I don't know, I don't know, a lot, long, of, long time. And now when I came back, most things yeah, were done. 17 years, 17, 17 years, 2002 okay. to 2019. Yeah, yeah so most things were, were very good and done, but um, adding the game variations, adding, um, balancing them with your help, um, yeah. took a lot of time and trying to get the helicopter better took a lot yeah. of time just to get one <laughs> element of this game a lot of iterations but, of the helicopter yeah. lots of different designs yeah. in the end I'm not 100% happy but I know it doesn't get better so that's that's it's hard with the, just the ball you're using the yeah. ball right right it's hard to hard to draw with just a ball <laughs> right. it's, it's 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 actually it's a missile but it doesn't matter this oh, is missile. Same, it's the same limitation yeah, yeah. One to four, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's one to eight. That, that's really really tough, yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm missing on some some people. When the games are getting good but not executed to the end, you you have a lot of such games in your show where you have glitches, where the screen rolls, and right. yeah. and 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 you feel something like. Mm, a few hours more in this game and it could have become great not just good or decent or average but it, that's a, where a lot of people stop i'm probably exactly and I, I always feel bad commenting on games that are released like they're put on cartridge and i don't want to say oh it would have been better if you did this and it's like well it's already done they i guess they could release a post cartridge binary which sometimes does happen mm. um but i i just always feel bad commenting on things like that. Yeah, I think um, Albert does a very good job which games he accepts for the store and which not. I mean, oh, you, can, yeah. you, can, you can be almost 100% sure that when you buy a game from the store, it's good. It's a good game. You, it's nothing where you say, "Well, this is a stinker," or some, something somebody put on <laughs> put on card just to have a game or just to make money or whatever. That doesn't happen for for Atari Age. You can buy these things somewhere else, but not at Atari Age. So yeah, very high quality, very good level of standards. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. One second. One second. My chat went away. Oh no. Yeah, I was down to 1%, but, uh, oh, there we go. One second. Um, so we're going to move on to uh, a demo, actually. And I think the only demo you've ever done. It's called Coke Zero. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I, love, I, I love looking at demos and dissecting demos and, and figuring out how they do them. They don't work well on the show because you just stare at them. <laughs> right. And a lot of people, top one, a lot of people aren't interested maybe in the background of how they're done and there's no interactivity. So I usually leave them off the show, but obviously um, this is part of your repertoire of what you've done. This was for the revision 2015. Mm -hmm. um, 
so th is this the only demo this is the only one i could find on the i'm probably pronouncing it wrong pue demo P pue database p-o-u-e-t sounds like french Poot, I think, yeah, it's it's a trumpet or something like this uh, uh, <laughs> in French, sense. yeah. Um, yeah, it's the only, only demo I did, and I'm not a very talented demo program. I can do graphic effects, but I cannot really do demos, because as you can see, this is my only demo, and it's it's technically, it's, it's cool, but if you compare it to the really, really good demos, they have some... They are better um, arranged. They have some, some, yeah. They they are just better executed. Not technically necessarily, but they have, um, yeah. They have direct. There's a director. Yeah. This is only. I'm only. I'm only <laughs> yeah. uh, an actor. Something. But. <laughs> so I bet you could submit your wireframe to as a demo and just let it run without any interactivity and it'd be like whoa oh my god yes something like that but you have to build it up basically you would have to do something like there would be some music there would be have some build up uh, of the effects maybe you start with something simple and make it even more complex later on and something like this um yeah it's like a movie it's like a mini movie yeah, yeah. You have the words on the screen going like it says cool and mm. you have to you have to get people excited because it, they're usually shown at demo parties and people mm -hmm. go ooh, ah, and they clap yeah. and stuff like that yeah yeah um so have you contributed to any other demos i i know this is your only one but like directly contributed no no this this came up from another p once demo from uh, maybe mix up the game. I think Swally was it. Um, he made um, a mega demo bang, where this effect, the initial effect, the first one when the when the demo starts, was part of it. And we discussed about how we can remove the lines uh, for repositioning. And I thought about I could do a kernel which is floating all over the space. And so yeah. this came up. So it's just technically something, some idea, and which turned out in a demo. It became second, so it wasn't that was very okay. So <laughs> yeah, no kidding. That's really good. Um, so that's that's this. <laughs> right. I think it's run through. Right, multiple that's times. That's helpful. fine. Yeah. Um, now we're going to move on to the trackball hacks, and we're going to treat them all as one because there's a ton of them. Right. So which which one is your favorite? So we'll play that one. My favorite. Ooh. I think the game benefits most is, is Missile Command, I think. Missile but, Command? But oh. but but I, I'm a fan of um, Missile Control because the game was won a lot because before it was almost unplayable and with the trackball it became playable. Yeah, it's very hard with the joystick. Yeah. Yeah, and, and it, it, it I changed a lot. Missile Maybe. control. Missile control. Let, let's try this one. Which way is it going? <laughs> not easy. <laughs> not easy to control the menu with the trackball. It was ball. fine for a second there. One down. One more. No, it's. And I'll do it. Oh, it's going crazy. Do with a select switch or or the. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely. Ah, I went past it was that. doing okay for a while. Uh, it can't work with. And then it just gets a little off. Here we go. Oh, oh, I don't know this game. <laughs> oh, it was on joystick. Okay, that's why. What am I doing? Um, which is good for the menu. Uh, uh, shoot those things. Oh. Um, oh, now you've started. Shoot those things that are coming down. Then you have to this bounce one? off. Oh, how was it? You have to bounce off those ships to shoot that ship? Yeah, you have to bounce oh. your shots from the rocket to get the ships... Here you can hit directly, but later on there will be a shield and then you have to bounce from the rocket. Yeah, you have to bounce it up, so shoot the rocket and it bounces over to shoot the ships. Gotcha. You'll have to learn, yeah, you have to do that on, on later levels. But So it's like Missile Command where you have your cities and you have to protect them, but mm. there's a lot more going on. Um, so what... So your trackball hacks are Missile Command, Centipede, Reactor, Challenge of Nexar, Missile Control, Marble Craze, Plaque Attack, and Colony 7. Which are all here, and they're released on cartridge, which was amazing <laughs> that Atari Age has put all these out on, on cartridge. Yeah. Um, so that people can enjoy them with the trackball. Um, so, uh, what prompted you to 
do all these these hacks for trackball where we're just like looking at these oh, games and going this really needs a trackball this game is not proper i mean initially it was only mr command for more than 10 years i think because this kernel of mr command had a lot of cpu time which you need for reading the trackball but later on omega matrix and I were discussing in a completely different thread and somehow we came up with ideas how to improve trackball reading. And mm. then we and then we started, oh, maybe more games could be made like this. And people came up with ideas which games. And I had some ideas because I played some games. I mean Centipede was obvious because it's or Millipede, these were obvious because there were trackball games. And some others where you have a cursor, it's generally a good idea to have a trackball because then you're more precise, m much faster. And um, so that's I, I was looking around at games which I liked, which I m might be able to improve. Uh, and yeah, these were the games which came out. Reactor, for example, was a suggestion by people because I never played Reactor before. It's complicated and I never got... It is. Really, it is yeah. complicated. People were yelling at me when I was playing it, and they're yeah. like, "No, you got to do it this way." And I'm like, "I don't understand Reactor. <laughs> I just don't get Reactor." I tried. I'll, I'll have to revisit it though. It it looks awesome, and I've seen other people play it online, and it's like, "Okay, that's cool." Yeah, it's a pretty cool game, but it's complicated. Yeah, it's even more complicated than this one probably. But um, it's not a typical Atari game. I mean, most games here are not that complex. Yeah. Um, so S. Ramirez says, how hard is it um, to implement trackball controls into missile command and missile control? Uh, in missile like, command, it was really, I mean, it was a first T, so I had to look up all the basics, but um, it was not that complicated because there's a lot of free CPU time. You don't oh, okay. see it, but it's, it's there's a lot of free CPU time. In all the other games, you have to find this time and to, you have to check out where, how to optimize your coding that it fits. And then you have to find some free RAM because you need to have to, to track the, the trackball. And, oh. and, so, and, you have, and you need some ROM because you need uh, some extra coding. And this mm. was the biggest problem. Because I, for me, I, I don't want to make the games larger. That's the challenge for me. If the game is 4K, I add the trackball into 4K, and not extend the game to 8K. It's just right. me. Yeah, yeah. yeah, my nerdish <laughs> brain. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> so almost like well, they could have used the trackball if they you tried a little harder. And, something and technically, like this. I think I read that there's there's no games officially that support the trackball and trackball mode for the 2600. Right. That's a shame because the, it's an incredible input device. Yes, yes. I, maybe it was too expensive back then. I don't know. Uh, and Or maybe they thought it uses too much kernel time. And yes, it uses kernel time. But with the ideas Omega and I developed, it, it's it's minimal. Yeah. It's not it's not low. It's it's more than a pedal. But it's it's right. it's it works. So, all these, um, all these, all this coding that you do, and all these routines, these optimizations that you've come up with, is is there a place where they where they all live and cataloged? And it's like here, here is all the track, all the best trackball routines. Here's all the best paddle routines. Here's how to divide by fifteen. Here's how to do this, and just like a big repository of all these things. No, I've I have my source code and I usually remember in which game I did it and then I look up and then maybe I reuse something. But it's not yeah. like I've I've extracted the coding from, from my source code, no. Usually it's just, I search and sometimes I, I don't remember and then I search my hard drive for some keywords which I remember and for example, safe key, yeah, that's, that's pretty easy to find. And um, then, I, then I copied code from it or adapt it, and there you get it. Yeah. But I have no code repository. Okay. Do you know if there's like a public one that yeah. people can go to and, and, the, and like very organized? Because I know you can search and search the Atari Age forums and search for the, the Stella list. And, yeah, the, the Stella list, there used to be something called Minitick. That's something from yeah. the Stella list. 
But okay. since then, I've, since Atari times, I don't think anybody has organized anything. You have yeah. to. It's you have, daunting because yeah, there's so many different ways to implement things. Yeah, and and since the last software update, uh, Albert, please don't listen for a moment. The 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 search is really crap of Atari 8. The forums can be searched very, very badly now. Um, it, yeah, it would be, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's okay. I usually use Google and I type in Atari age and then the yes. thing I want to search on Atari age in Google Me and too. that works very well. Previously yeah. it used to work, but now it's really become really hard to find something. It's not only the forum, but also the messages and everything. Albert is paying a lot of money. They should listen and improve this stuff. Uh, Nathan is asking why trackball hack isn't possible with crystal castles. Ooh, yeah. Yes. It, that would that would improve it a lot. Yes, yes, of course. And Omega and I, we both looked at it and we both agreed it's impossible because the kernel is too busy. The game oh. the game does too much. There is no time left to add something into this kernel. The kernel right. time is utilized. No, that's that's a big shame because that one probably would that one would benefit a lot from it because using the joystick on Crystal Castles is, mm. is it's it's pretty annoying. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think I covered all the all the trackball questions. Um, question for Captain Classic. Um, what is your it says he's he listed a bunch of hacks that you've done actually that are kind of related to this because this is an improvement on an existing mm -hmm. game. Um, you've done Amadar DS, Asteroids DC Plus, Atlantis FH, Battle Zone, Battle Zone TC, uh, Missile Command Trackball, Omega Race DC, Robot Tank TC, uh, Sadistroids. Sprintmaster DC and Pitfall X two five six. What is your favorite hack that think that you think provided the greatest improvement over the original game? Ah, uh, it's too many. I mean, the trackball hacks do a lot. <laughs> I mean, they change the gameplay, improve the gameplay a lot. Um, yeah. I, I like my Sadistroids hack because um, Asteroids was way too easy. The directions of the of the asteroids was uh, they should go more cr cross across the screen, and with, with the sadistroids hack, I managed that, and it was pretty simple. So the effect was very cool. Um, I, I think the pitfall hack was also quite cool, which I did lately because uh, it added a lot of uh, variation to the game. It did, yeah. It was uh, a lot of fun to play. So yeah, there's um, ah, it's too many hacks. I mean it. <laughs> There's a lot of hacks which are just uh, control, simple control hacks. Like, I, I think I did Battle Zone and Robot City converted into something like track control, so you, that you can control, uh, control it with two joysticks. I mean, these oh, are very, wow. yeah, you, you you push and pull only. Left and right doesn't exist. No? Um, oh, wow. So uh, this is, um, but it's a simple hack. I mean, this was very easy to implement <laughs> or the hack where I won a prize you remember last year where, where, where the hack became first this was a five minutes hack where it, it, <laughs> I was part Which of one was it? Amida I think I accelerated oh, the speed I, I just changed one <laughs> one or two bytes it was really right. really yeah um, this is not nothing I really makes all the difference of. You know? <laughs> yeah, but it, uh, it doesn't deserve a prize, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> um, what was the most difficult hack that you've had to implement for the 2600? What was the most challenging one that you did? Uh, Probably one of the trackball ones. Unfortunately, Marble Craze, where I lost the source code in the head, in the head crash, and it was almost, almost done. So. Oh, no. Yeah, this was really tricky because I had to, to get the get controls in a way that you can play the game because it's really tough with pedals and also oh, it's very board. hard. Yeah, oh and I want I wanted the controls that you not. I, I mean, one goal in my game is you should never fight the controls. I, I've nope. seen too many games where you fight the controls. You should 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 fight the game. So I. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's that's I think I've mentioned that a couple times on the show. It's like that's 
that's not supposed to be the hard part of the game right is controlling your character right the the, the challenge should come from the gameplay yeah, yeah like, oh the joystick's not jumping it i can't get on the ladder and it's like no 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 that should not be it yeah. right right or you're stuck in a corner or something like this it should not happen stinks like these and and this yeah. this can really ruin a game because you you, you get frustrated i mean yeah, and uh, Al says hopefully we can get Marble Craze done at some point. Um, uh, that would be very cool. I don't know. I, 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 <laughs> I, I, at the moment, I have no intention to start from scratch. The hard drive is uh, on my desk, and getting it repaired costs significant money. I'm not sure mm -hmm. if I want to invest it. And, and the risk is that it will still not be restored. So. Mm. So let's move on to Aardvark. Ooh. Which is a fun, fun game. I love Aardvark. Oh yep. my god. Me too. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess it's you have to, to really to uh, oh yeah, trackball. I haven't is played such a trackball game in a while. Input device. We yep. did a, a two part trackball special mm. and we played all the trackball games and it was so much fun. Mm. Um, so let's load that up. And, um, oh, I forgot to mention, I don't know if you've seen this mm -hmm. yet. You uh, made the cover. Mm -hmm. That looks great. Well, yeah. I got it. I got it the other day, yesterday. Yep. So it looks amazing on the cover. Brian Mathern's new book, volume four. Mm -hmm. So Star Castle is on there. So um, Aardvark, um, you're listed as game design and development. Right. Um, so I guess you you he um, he posts Oscar. nano chess posted. Oh, is it not on there? No. Oh no, I missed Aardvark. <laughs> um, we'll use the actual cartridge because it'll take less time to open up the box. There's there's Aardvark. Beautiful. Yeah. Was released not too long ago. You just knew he just wanted to crack open the uh, Aardvark. No, I don't. <laughs> Because there's always a chance of bending. Oh, I did it. Yay. Bending this top flap. Some people don't care, but I do. <laughs> when you open it up. Breaking the box. Breaking yeah. the box, yeah. But we'll do it this time. Lovely. Oh, a beautiful looking cartridge. Somebody. Oh, yes, Nathan. I think it's Nathan did this. Nathan Strom. I believe. Of course he did it. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, and boot right into the game. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> no menu. Um, gorgeous. Gorgeous. Um, so tell us about um, your contributions to Aardvark, because it was a collaborative effort between yourself, uh, Nano Chess, and Nathan Strum. Mm -hmm. Oscar, yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, Oscar had, had a game basically working game done i think he showed yeah. stuff in in the forums and um, i came to him and said i think we could make this kernel look nicer i, I had no direct i had no c concrete idea at this moment i wanted basically to make the the background at the top a bit more interesting and i wanted to make this artwork nicer because um, right. even in the ar arcade it looks ugly Oh, terrible yeah. design in the arcade. Yeah, yeah. Just, this is a big improvement in many aspects of the arcade version. Yeah, and so so I came up with some ideas and say, okay, we could make it closer to the arcade, and we could make it better than the arcade. And <laughs> and, and 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 Nano Chess, it was it, it was mostly also sequential because Oscar at this time had uh, problems in his family and his sickness, and and so. So I, I, I took a step at it and, and started re reworking with it and prepared the code and, and, and Nathan came on board. Uh, I, I suggested to, Art, to, to Oscar, we should ask Nathan if he has time and if he wants to do a nice character over there. It, also the underground yeah. elements, but especially in the artwork, I mean, this is some I could I could do the ants. I had some ants which looked pretty convincing. I found them, but I couldn't do the artwork. I mean, that's impossible. Oh yeah, huge character with so many frames of animation. Yeah, and it's, it's yeah. incredible. And, and that and, was um, quite a technical challenge to get this thing 
into the oh, screen yeah. without uh, it doesn't jump into the screen it, it comes into the screen and there's no that was really challenging and um, mm -hmm. so what you see here is mostly or almost completely my work except for some routines which um, of course for the gameplay logic but I have also rewritten parts of it uh, and and uh, and uh, of course Nathan. Yeah, this is for example mostly from from Oscar, so it's really yeah. collaborative. Uh, how wide is the sprite? Uh, Thirty pixel, I think. Uh, Thirty-two. Thirty-two pixel, yes. Yeah, because you were nominated for the now deprecated technical achievement award <laughs> for it. It was my so own the... suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> so the. Um... Yeah, the award was 32 pixel sprite that smoothly enters, traverses, and exits the length of the color changing playfield, both single line, without using H move blanks, W syncs, or using extra sprite data. That's the full. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's technically it's really complicated, and uh, it's something I'm pretty proud of. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh, uh, definitely. There's a question from Dianoid. What tool do you use to share code when co-working on a game? Something like Bitbucket? Yeah, GitHub. GitHub, okay. We're using GitHub now. Previously something else, but now it's GitHub usually. Yeah. Um, CD-W said, I didn't realize how many homebrew games Thomas has worked on. I suspect he's worked on more than anyone else. No, 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 no. Chris Reed has way more yes. games than I have. Just going to say that. Yeah, Atari 2600 land, Chris Reed, hundreds. Mm -hmm. I, I'm pretty sure it's in the hundreds. At yeah. least over 100, maybe 200. Like, almost every week he has a new game. They're very they're very idea-based, his his games. So he's like, he has an idea, I'm, sh I'm sure. I haven't talked to him much about this, but I'm sure he has an idea, and he implements it, and he moves on. Immediately. He's like, yep, I did it. Next one, did it. Next one, mm -hmm. like I have, I've played unending number of his games on the show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when he started, he had some. The ideas were very, very basic and generic, but over the time, he has quite improved. I mean, it's, it's he's getting better. You can see, but he still has this attitude not finishing the games really. Like I would like to see him yeah. finishing them. That would really. Yeah. I mean, 10 great games is better than 100 or average or <laughs> mediocre games. No, no, so. yeah. Yeah. It's just not his style. I, I don't know. He, he does his thing. <laughs> yes, of course. And, He's yeah. diff everybody's different. I mean, I'm German and I have the German attitude of perfection. And maybe I'm <laughs> even in Germany, I'm nerdish. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's me. Yeah. yeah. I, I am exactly the same way. If I'm going to do something, I'm going to make sure it's done as best as I can do it, and I'm going to mm -hmm. finish it. And if I don't, if I know I'm not going to be able to do those things, I won't even start it. Mm -hmm. So you, you rarely, that's why my output is low, but when I do something, I find that it's, it's at least of a decent quality, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whether it's a movie or making a game or doing a, a show like this. I, I make sure that I put enough and effort into it that it's, it's decent. Yeah, we think alike here. Yeah. So we are both on the same boat. Um, everything about this game is incredible, which earned it three nominations and one win at the last year's Atari Homebrew Awards. Um, what what drew you to this game when Oscar posted it, posted it about it in the Atari Age forum? I can't tell everything, but I, I I found this game is there's a prototype existing of this game, and I had my hands on this prototype, and I played it, mm. and I found the idea very very nice, and it was a shame it was never released, it wasn't going to be released, and I also hinted, I, I'm I, I'm I'm not sure if that's true, but I told um. Uh, in the forums when this was discussed that somebody should just start writing its own version of artwork because uh, I mean we had the videos uh, or we had some some reviews from 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 some people who were able to play the game and maybe I, th I, I think Oscar started due to this or maybe it, it's uh, not not only due to this but it maybe it's 
yeah, motivated him to start this. And I like this game, or even the, 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 if you look at the prototype, the version is very, very simple compared, compared to this one. But the gameplay idea is cool. I mean, there's no other game like this. Oil's Well is a clone of this. And the... Oil's Well. Oh, Oil's Well is a clone of this. So this is yes. the original yes. concept. Yeah. Ant Eater is the original concept, yes. Ant Eater, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's, that's almost the, the reason why I start a game. I have to like it. Yeah. Right, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Carl G asks me, i just answer quickly, when do we get to see the first look at your game? Well, I haven't actually put, typed any code that's related to the game yet, but I've done a lot of, Development. development of graphics and pseudocode and kind of development in my head of how the kernel is going to be and things like that. So, um, don't know. <laughs> it will get done though. It's, I suggest, it's free time. That's... yeah, I suggest not too much planning, but do some coding. It helps motivation keeping up. So when you finally see something working is really helpful. Don't do too much research and planning and planning ahead when it's your first game you will always have to change your plans anyway so right. don't wait wait but too long I'm, and i also have to teach myself a little bit i know assembly a little bit i know how mm. it works that's not the difficulty it's more of applying it to the 2600 mm. right now i'm i'm reviewing and re-reviewing andrew davy andrew davy's um you know lessons i guess mm. you know, that dianoid put into um well, it's in the other it's room. It's in a book, right? It's yeah. in a book, yeah. Atari 2600 Basics or something it's called. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent book. And 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 Spiceware, Daryl Spice Jr.'s lessons as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm reading about reading and rereading about Playfield right now because Playfield's very important to my game without giving too much away. Mm -hmm. um, and it covers the whole screen, the Playfield. So it's, it's going to be... It's, it's different than any other game that's ever been put out on the 2600, so I don't have a lot to work from in terms of examples. Mm. So, um, But anyway, that's about me. That's Look, Splendinat <laughs> Splendi says the same. Break it down into s lots of small goals. Progress leads to more yeah. motivation. Yeah, yeah and that's, that's correct. when I'm going to show the game is when I've got the first... T like, just the just basics. A little bit mm -hmm. done. When yeah. you can move your character and you can die that's it mm -hmm. and that and that's and that's enough to show people it's like oh this is what the game's about and i'm it's, sure i'm sure you get a lot of feedback too from people like like suggestions on what to yeah. do so and um, it's, once you get that initial little bit right and so. it's a port too yeah. so i am basing it on something that's already existing mm -hmm. so i'm trying to get as close to that as possible while keeping within the confines of what the 2600 can do yeah mm. You must tell me if I'm making suggestions that you don't want them because you want to do it on your own. <laughs> oh, no, I'm, I'm definitely going to reach out to the, the community once I've got my that first basics done because I don't want to reveal what I'm doing beforehand. Um, but once I've got that done, it's going to be like open source. Please let tell me, help me with Give this. Give suggestions. Yeah, because yeah, I'm just starting doing it. So I... I do. We'll take suggestions. You want me to continue with Artbark for a little bit? Um, no, or? we're going to move on to Space okay. Invaders Arcade. One of the, your longest uh, developmental game and development. <laughs> not um, Robot 19... City. Uh, that one's the last one. And it's mm -hmm. not quite as long. Okay. And Space Invaders Arcade dates back to 2001, I've traced it. And you're still working on it, so that's 19 years. I, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's the record of any homebrew game <laughs> that you know 19 years that you know about there, I that don't I know think about. so maybe other people have something uh, sitting on their hard drive and maybe they come back that's right that's yep. very true that's very true <laughs> and, and most likely actually uh, yeah a lot of things started and never finished right so but that i know of this yeah. is the longest one um so this oh <laughs> what is it why is it back to that? There's only one game on that cartridge. Jeez. Yeah, yeah rubbish. <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> terrible, terrible. 
Need a double ender Zonox card. We need um, we need we need a card with an LED screen so that you can change the label according to the game you play. Oh, how there nice would that be? That's That'd nice. be pretty fancy. I've seen that for other other systems. Get like um, where you change an the e game. Ink, an e-ink screen, so it, Ooh, it, it yeah. actually yeah e-ink color color e-ink yeah that would be color great. Color e-ink yeah. yeah. All those Pebble developers they can put their what they what they develop towards that. Yeah. So. The next harmony um, harmony edition of the harmony card. <laughs> Um, so this, this, uh, Space Invaders, um, so this homebrew seems to have the longest development time of any nice. game I've seen. Um, I've seen it listed as started at 2001 and you've made some updates to it this year. Um, you've credited, um, a zero page homebrew show where I played some other Space Invaders ports that prompted you to restart the development on this one. It was yes. INV, 9V plus, I think. Um. Can you explain the obstacles that you had to overcome to create a more arcade accurate space invaders with 11 invaders that the others couldn't achieve? I mean, INV plus did it, but they did it with playfield graphics, mm -hmm. which was very playable and it really felt like space invaders. Um, but the original Atari port only had six space invaders going across the screen. So how did, how did you achieve this? Um, yeah, this is a tricky kernel. Um, there's, there's, of course, this uh, repositioning trick that you know from uh, Galaxians and from Galagon. And um, the problem is, um, or the problem is, when they come to the core, to the edges, left, especially to the left, you have to reposition them on the right because you only see the second copy. Um, so you, 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 you do. The, you do them as um, dual copies, and only the second one you want to see, and only the second one you can see. Oh, okay. So, so um, you have to blank out the first one? Yeah, so you have to modify the kernel. Basically, in the kernel, I think there are 13 repositionings, and you have to remove two, and always the right ones, and um, so that you have the 11 ones which are working. And I wanted the formation with 11 invaders to move from the very left to the very right. And um, so, because there is not much space left and right. If I would let yeah, them they're going like this pretty much. Did you do yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very short amount of space? Yes. So um, that was the achievement. And uh, at that time I was, uh, Stella didn't support this correctly and Z26 also, I think I did it with Z26. So um, I had a supercharger uh, back then, and I loaded it on this, and it never worked out. And, and later on, I, I filled it out, and it worked, but it was more the tech demo. And um, mm. I just wanted it to work. And, 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 and when it worked, it, I lost interest, also because of the, of the shields, because I wanted the shields to be as they are now. Bug! <laughs> what did you do? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. The I shot it and uh, yeah, yeah, collision. It, it, it made a new invader. It did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bug in this code, and uh, that's sure. funny. Um, I want to yeah, see it's a work in progress. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And and now I decided to go with extra RAM because um, mm. I go. This is a 3.75k game, effectively with <laughs> with uh, 128 bytes extra RAM, which are used. As, as of now, it's only used for the shield, 60 bytes or something like this. Right. And you um, and you were talking with me about the shield and the uh, the method of which you store the damage to the shield. Mm -hmm. And that... um, you try to reduce the amount of uh, information that you need to store. Because in the, the original arcade machine, like you could... It's very granular, the destruction of the, the yeah, shield, here, I believe. Yeah, here now too. So it's pretty granular. If, if Tanya shoots the shield, you can see, because she's the only one who, who can shoot in this demo. In this, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you shoot at the shields, you will, you will notice that you can destroy them really granularly. Yeah. And that's, that's really, really amazing. Um, S1 
Ramirez, 2008, says, I have to leave. Uh, Zero Page Homebrew and Thrust, this has been great. Thank you for doing this today. I know it's getting late for Thomas, too. Thank you yeah. so, so much for all your games. Oh, it's okay. Contributions, collaborations. Space Invaders Arcade is looking good. Yeah, a, really good. A tactical tip, do you have to shoot the left or the right columns first? Yeah, make it smaller so there's more time. Yeah, I, again, a game I haven't played a lot of. Oh, okay. It's easy to play, though. I mean, that's the nice thing about this game. It's easy to understand. Pick it up and play they, it. And, they're, yeah. looch, they're not firing back. That's why it's easy. <laughs> yes. That's true. It's on the easy mode right now. Yeah. The telemode is as the I learned. mode. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, question from Captain Classic. Um, kind of unrelated to this. Um, you just created a turbo mode toggle for Stella emulator to help reduce the wait time for games when the Atari 2600 is thinking. And that was a very specific addition for uh, Andrew Davies chess game. Mm -hmm. And that was also for us to play it on the show too. So it was kind of, kind of interesting. How long have you been making improvements to the Stella emulator and what Stella improvement has been your greatest accomplishment? Uh, I think for three years now, maybe. Um, I started. I think I started with the phosphor effect. I think I only provided some coding and 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 uh, Stephen implemented it. And then I brought helped bringing um, Christian or Dirty Harry on board to get the TIA kernel better. And then I helped starting coding. And uh, what I'm most proud of, I mean. The we, we revamped the controller uh, code, or I revamped the controller code last year. You cannot see a lot of it, but you can, for example, now you can use the same key for two controllers. Previously, it wasn't possible. Uh, ah, and nice. that's that was really tough to implement, but you cannot see it really. Right? So you, you see the phosphor, that's obvious yeah. to the people. But I think the most proud of, it's a time machine. That's, ah, very handy. Oh yeah, so that's um, that's it's useful for debugging and for developing, and it's in the when you're playing the games, it's also very very useful. Oh yeah, yeah. So you can replicate something that. Oh, what, how did that happen? Rewind. The let's same. Let's yeah. do it again. Check out the code of, of what what happened during that. Yeah, it's well, really. That was really a bug good. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a bug too. Yeah. <laughs> It's okay. I they they keep murdering me anyway. So. <laughs> and now we're gonna move on to the Woo! last game. Robot City. Oh my goodness, we made it. <laughs> oh, it took longer than I thought. Robot City. <laughs> and this is uh, an impending release mm. from Atari Age. Mm. Um, sometime in July, it's been given. And, I hope. Um, so it's. I hope. Yeah. <laughs> hope, because there's a lot of pieces that have to come together. Because Al wants to release them all at once, so there has to be the games have to be done, the labels, the artwork, the boxes have to be ready. Um, everything has to be written up for the store. There's a lot of pieces in place. So, um, Robot City has also has a really long development time, um, 2002 to 2020. Um, this is an Odyssey 2 port. Uh, a game uh, from the Odyssey 2 mm -hmm. um, and we dug up an old version of it which seemed to, you, to prompt you to start working on it again which which is unbelievable and fun as well at the same time because we we're like oh this is a fun game this is this is great why, why didn't this get finished it seems finished um, um, so and now it's being released through Atari Age so what what originally struck you um, to make a port of this game and did you have an odyssey 2 at some point i think i already asked you this question when we did the show no no i didn't but um somehow i stumbled over this game i think it was a video game critic who reviewed it i don't i don't exactly remember i i know i i installed an odyssey emulator to play it because i found the uh -huh. game idea that you can shoot enemies only from the back that was mm -hmm. something pretty unique for from the games and yeah. And um, at that moment, there was another mini game competition coming up, and I, I was looking for ideas, and so I started with this game. So, yeah, it's it's not a direct port because I changed the game pace and stuff like this. The, the Odyssey port is much slower and has only one life, like many Odyssey right. games. I don't know why. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, they have only one life, most of them. Um, at this time, it was one of the first. I mean, probably they didn't, or that was not, that was more realistic or whatever. I don't know. Right. Yeah, maybe they were going for that. It's like, well, you only have one life. You yeah. better make it work. Yeah. Um, question from Captain Classic. Um, Robot City was featured on Zero Page Homebrew, and you decided to make some excellent improvements and complete the game. Do you have any old Atari 2600 game projects that you haven't updated and completed that Zero Page Homebrew should preview to help you inspire <laughs> to complete them? Um, or even games that maybe you haven't even put out. I'm sure there's lots of ones that you've experimented with and then just they didn't go anywhere. Yeah, I have um, started, I see, maybe you have seen it in my blog, I have started with Paradroid once and uh, it didn't work out well. I, but I, yeah. I've done the puzzle part more or less. Uh, I, I wish I would eventually finish this one. And uh, what I also want to do is is a better version of Boulder Dash. Eventually, maybe. Oh. Yeah, I mean, with a better bank switching, maybe we can do Boulder Dash two or something like this. That's that's a, uh. that's an idea I would like to do. But yeah, and Andrew David was talking about changing the bank switching scheme to three E plus. Help something. I, I don't know enough details to to talk about that, but is that part of part of it? Yeah, I mean that's a ba that's a fundamental. I mean, it makes no sense to do it with the old bank switching um, because you would run out of a lot of resources. So the whole game is on the edge at the moment, and uh, Border Dash Two has new elements, and uh, we have to would have to remove stuff to fit it into there. Because not not of the overall space, but of the non flexibility of the space. And three plus mm. is much better. Andrew, and Andrew, if he's still here, he's programming for it, and he should know best. I've started programming for it a bit. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it, it's it's a learning from from doing this Boulder Dash game. And yeah. what else do I have from heart of map? I started with several kernels, but not with games. I did a Sudoku kernel or whatever. Mm. So Ooh, yes, I, I was thinking the other day because I I played Sudoku a little bit, how it whether it could be done because there's a lot of details there and yes. whether you can make marks or not and temporarily put in numbers and there's it's a lot of detail that may be difficult on a 20. Yeah, I don't think it will work. I mean, you can do the, it's hard enough to to display all the all the digits alone and then you have to put at the, the check marks to Lines. it. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I have It'd some be a challenge. Games. It'd be a big challenge. And I have a gameplay idea in my mind it, it goes by Lift Boy where you control an elevator and you have to transport people and you get uh, tips. When you are fast enough, that's um, great already. <laughs> yeah, but um, I don't. I'm not convinced. <laughs> it's it sounds a lot like the game and watch things where things are happening and you have to, or you know, things on conveyor belts and you have to make sure you know like. Um, yeah, this is this is larger. You you can only see parts of the it is a hotel. And uh, like right. a, like a like a real lift boy, you don't know how many people are queuing in front and uh, where they want to go and stuff like this. Mm, yeah, I, I don't I don't know if I will ever make it, but the idea is there. It 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 sounds like an idea with a lot of possibilities. I I do like it a lot. So. And I also always wanted to do some color matching game because that's the strength of the. Of the Atari, I wanted to do something with color mixing and matching. This ah. sh this shades game you played uh, lately, it was a bit like this. But uh, I had something like more something like I have to match colors to defend. So I mix I mix something uh, a potion which works against a certain type of energy and I have to to do it on the fly while they're attacking. Something like this. But right. it's all all not worked out it's only in my head and not there's not nothing planned on not nothing written down or no code existing just ideas right. yeah that one sounds like an interesting concept that's for sure yeah because the strength of the 2600 is it's so colorful 
and yeah. it was like the the most colorful console for so long 128 colors it's incredible yeah unless that's you're on ccam and then you get shafted but that's that's a whole other thing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. colors <laughs> that, that's why i'm always doing or, or often doing this rainbows in front of the, in the title game screen like in swoops or in robot city i've done it because i like it so much or on ixion uh this is a hack which i did uh, or on ixion where i did a hack on title screen i like this uh, colorful things Oh yeah, you might as well take advantage of it. Uh, play to the strengths of the Atari. Yes. Uh, yes. When you can. Yeah. Um, so if there is no more questions in the chat, we'll give it a couple more seconds there. Um, that is the last game. And nice. uh, for now. I mean, <laughs> for now. Yes. <laughs> for now. And I mean, we. I mean, somebody said, oh, he has more games than I thought. I mean, we even glossed over some a lot of games. We didn't go over your hacks. We only played one trackball game. <laughs> um, so there's a lot more that you've done. And, and so you're one of the more prolific um, programmers, uh, developers for the 2600. And, mm -hmm. and I thought, who better to start with? than than yourself i feel absolutely honored that you choose me to be the first one i mean that's really really great i mean what else and, can i say also, a game a game is coming out that 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 you've made too so it's a it's a good time to do it mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so so thank you so much for for being on the show and uh, enduring the uh three hours <laughs> no problem show is that, but a normal length of our show is three hours i always say it's two we do a two-hour show and everything else is like bonus but uh, it usually ends up being three anyway <laughs> um, yeah no more no more questions everybody got their questions in so that's that's good um so yeah thank you so much um for joining us and uh let's go i'm gonna use the uh side by side screen there we go we never used that one. We're side by side now. <laughs> I made ah. all these different screens, but it's like, oh, we want to show the games the whole time. So I just used the game screen. So this, this one we didn't show. I had to show that. <laughs> so um, we'll go back to the full screen there. Oh, no, we'll keep it on that. So yeah, thank you once again. And now I can let you get on with your evening and go to bed. <laughs> so you don't have to stay up. No, uh, it's a little bit of time left. So... No yeah, problem. A little bit of coding you can do before bed, right? Mm, uh, not this week. No. I don't know. I don't know. I have. I have not. I'm not in the mood of coding at the moment. I don't know why. I don't know how the other developers see it. It comes in bursts. So you start bet, something, yeah. yeah, and then you stop. And I found I should never force myself into doing something because it's hobby. I mean, forcing yeah. is done in a job. Yeah, you know, when you That's work. Right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you never want it to turn into a job. That's and, right. And I, I'm always very careful with this show as well, that I never want this to turn into a job. Mm -hmm. Because... You, you want to enjoy, enjoy it. Yeah. The enjoyment leaves immediately yeah. as soon as you get too serious about it or you start like, oh... How it, it becomes an obligation instead of something you're enjoying doing in your free time, right? You don't yeah. want right, to right. Do yes. Yeah. I mean, I've been offered multiple times money from people to do their games or something like this. Uh, first, they couldn't afford it. I mean, they have yeah. almost asked, yeah. underestimate how much time went into a game. And uh, when you come up with a number, it's uh, or several thousand bucks or something. And, and then you tell them, and even I wouldn't do it for this. Uh, no. <laughs> exactly. It, the numbers don't work out unless they're like a philanthropist that just wants a game done and mm -hmm. they'll pay whatever. Yeah. That's, that's the only way it's going to work. Yeah. You'll never be able to recoup uh, yes. the money and make it a business unless yeah. you're super clever with it and you're so fast at coding and you're the only one working on it. Like there's a lot of factors that have to go in. And even then I'm skeptical. I'm very yeah, skeptical. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because so, I'm, I'm sure I would come up with ideas and then, then we would have to discuss and then it's his game and you, you could have, right. would have every right to say, shout, shut up. And then it's my name <laughs> on it and uh, no. Yeah, and then it's just for the money and then you gotta make it worthwhile. Cause you, there's other things you'd rather be doing like working on your own games. Right. You know? Uh, so it it makes a lot of sense to keep it fun keep it a hobby and not get too serious with it and and do things at your own time as they come mm -hmm. yeah exactly well, 
Atari's returned. To say goodbye. Just to say goodbye. Yeah. Pixel's here too, but you can't see him. The cat cam isn't on, so. <laughs> well, you okay. can switch to the chat again. Here. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Everybody's Yay. saying thank you. Uh, yeah. Jupiter Storm, thank you. Thomas, great interview. Uh, Ground Trooper, thank you, Thomas, for all your amazing work keeping our hobby and childhood alive. Yeah. There's a big nostalgia factor for all, all of us. All this, yeah. Uh, definitely, there's definitely an, yes. an age bracket of the viewership. <laughs> that yeah. it uh, falls in. A pack rat, thanks Thomas for all the games, helping out other programmers too. My thanks to everyone keeping the Atari 2600 alive, Jupiter Storm 17, Carl G, great show, enjoyed it. Yes, so thank you so much. Yeah, yeah for, it was a great show today. for me too. I mean, I, great questions and I think, yeah, I, I, I was able to answer most of them as I wanted oh, yes. them. And if anybody has more questions, they know how to contact me at Atari H, no problem. <laughs> Yeah, and hopefully I didn't scare away other developers with a three-hour show. <laughs> he just has a lot of games, and I didn't want to miss any. <laughs> just so. start, take one with three games or five or so. That's faster. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, yeah. There'll be there'll be shorter ones. There we go. Spiceware didn't uh, run away, so he's the next one that's scheduled. Yeah, Daryl Spice Jr. So he yeah. doesn't seem like he's gonna not do it now. No. Uh, it, we'll try and cut it, it down. It's and all keep good. It moving. It's all good. Yeah. yeah I hope people, I will and, be and there. People watch and they drop in and out, right? So that's they can good too. Watch yeah. at their leisure. That's so right. It's yeah. all good. Yeah. Uh, as long as it's interesting, that's all it has to be. Yeah. Yeah. So we will say goodbye to you. Thank you so yes. much, and uh, we will talk with you online. Next time, huh? Yep, yeah. You bet. We'll see you soon in the chat. Thank you, Thomas. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Switch back to us. Yeah. If you could hang up on Pearl Thomas. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> there we go. Um, so thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in and holding with us on this experimental new type of episode, mm -hmm. new type of stream that uh, I think went really well. Yeah. And we'll do more of them. And yep. the next one. And I enjoyed. I get to play a lot of video oh, games. Oh yeah. Exclusively. <laughs> Uh, and the next one is going to be Daryl Spice Jr. As nice. I said, it is already scheduled. Is yep. for August fourteenth. Okay. Um, and we'll be going through his games. Nice. And I'm pretty sure I have most of his games nice. on uh, on cartridge as well. I I see. I got all these out and I didn't hold them up. Here's Star Castle, in in the box. And uh, he is hard a, bark. There was a lot to go through, so that's there understandable. Was. And Boulder Dash. Boulder Dash. And yep. I showed all the other cartridges. Yep. yep. Um, and so the next episode is on Tuesday. It is not Wednesdays anymore. It's going to be Tuesdays and Fridays now. Um, it's going to be Tuesday at 6 p.m. We're keeping the times the same. I can still see you. I hope so. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> through through Skype? Is oh. Skype still on? No, I don't think it, I I hit oh, no, hang no. up. That's... Oh, he he can see see us through this now. I, I hope guess. that's I hope yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's gone. Yeah. Um so yeah, the next show is on Tuesday. Yes. And it is with you? Yes. Yes, on Tuesday. Tuesday with you. Yep. And we're going to be playing we have an exclusive work in progress premiere of Local Hero 2. Mm -hmm. Uh we're going to be playing Stack game which is new we're gonna be playing prince of indiana which is new and robot tag hmm. which is new as well excellent so Lots it should be games. a very fun show yeah. yeah all the old ones keep getting pushed back because i'm like oh more new games <laughs> more people new games. are developing people this are is, developing games this is good. incredible yeah uh I love, great show james and tanya i love the insight we get from these interviews yes. well i hope they're good questions Oh, Tuesday's live are going to be rough for me. I'll watch mm -hmm. one way or the other. Yeah, people are going to have to adjust a little bit. Yeah. It's going to be going back to Tuesdays and Fridays. Yes. I really like the spacing out yeah. of the Wednesdays and Sundays. And we, I was going to go back to Wednesdays and Fridays like before. Yeah. But Wednesday to Friday is only one day in between. Yeah, that's I'm a lot really, of work. Yeah. It was too much work for me, and I'm really appreciating the gap. Yeah. So I thought Tuesdays and Fridays... Yeah. worked better for me and it makes for a better show as well yeah oh and nathan strum has a new chapter in the zero page homebrew 2600 yeah. repair saga we might I have did to wait till tuesday to talk about well, that we'll, yeah we'll go through it on tuesday yeah um i did already read it um it's very very cool it's progress it's it's getting there yeah he's got the rgb installed on his system 
Nice. It's very exciting, but we'll get that. You're still on video. On Twitch. Yeah, yeah, we're oh, good. Yeah. We're good. We're yeah. finishing up. <laughs> okay, that's what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then the, the show after that is the Friday. Yes. So officially now we're switching to Tuesdays and Fridays. And so. that's par partially because we think Darcy's going to start joining back, right? Maybe. So, yeah, we hope. <laughs> we hope. Yeah. At some point. So. No, yeah, yeah. Darcy's coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not next Friday, but the Friday after, because yeah. he was actually here on Friday, but there's no show on Friday. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and that's all that's scheduled for now. So thank you so much, everybody for joining us. It was a lot of fun. Thank you, Pixel, for, oh, for joining look us. Look at him coming back. Look at this dude. Darcy in real person. In person. In yes. In person. We're going to try that. Coming Friday, but the one after. He'll yeah. be going back to every second Friday. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, yep, and the kitty! Yeah. <laughs> I want to put my logos up there. Yay! One for each, because they're both, they're both over there right now, but they're around. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Dan ABC, D-Train 37, Nathan Strum, a uh, very special thanks to Thrust26, yep. Thomas Yench, uh, Mark Space Inc., Al, Al Nefer, Atari Age, Kev Atari Kelly, Age. Splendid Nuts, Pack Rats. I swear. Jupiter Storm, Metal Lunar. Uh, CD W. Oh. Thank you so much for making Johnny uh, WC23. Uh, Ice Bosta, Deanoid. Carl G. I'm S. Sure Ramirez. We're repeating things at this point. Probably. Let's, uh, let's look for some unique ones here. Yeah. Uh, I think I got most of them. Lots of talking. Yeah, yeah. I think Johnny WC23. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, great. Uh, right. No, he's not going to wear a mask. Um, we are uh, in BC. It's really, really low here. Yeah. And we've already met up with our CISA. Yeah. Um, like, it's one we're, of the better places in yeah. the world. But, I mean, everything's always contingent on things staying that way, too. So, yeah. so, so that's change. why we say hopefully he'll be here. But yeah, it may change, change back. It might change, but, yeah. Um, because things have opened up. Darcy's in our bubble. Yes, he is. Yes. Yeah, he is. Um, things have opened up quite a bit in Vancouver. And not necessarily in all of Canada. And, well, uh, yeah. But in Vancouver, it's it's very, very We've good We've been here. very good for the time being. I think it helps Ours just keeps going ocean down and mountains down and, down. and a very cut-off border right now. So <laughs> Yep, no Americans allowed for now. Americans allowed. Yeah, so we've yep. been... We've restaurants been, are open. Restaurants are open. Uh, not bars like nightclubs, but restaurants not, are. Not nightclubs, yeah. not concerts. No, no big, close gatherings, but... But the parks are now open, the beaches are open, the restaurants, restaurants are open. They, open. they all have um, separated out tables and yep. plexiglass and things. And yep. But it's been slow. It's been pretty good so far. Well, um, fingers crossed it stays that way over the summer, but you never are, know. People are pretty sensible. For, I mean, it's very relaxed <sighs> yes, here. Yes and no. Like, we did go to the beach one day. And yeah. we, what we did notice is people were sitting apart, but there were groups, especially of younger people who were together. But yeah, the young people are act the same no matter where you I go, know. pretty much. So. Yeah, if you're if you're twenty, yeah. <laughs> but um, but but to be there as a person, it didn't. It was it was fine. We could it stay away fine. from groups of people. So yeah, and yeah. restaurants are very safe. The plexiglass, like you said. Yeah. All the all workers are wearing masks. Yes, I think they have to actually because they encounter hundreds of people. Oh, I know. We encounter them. Yeah. And the surfaces and stuff, so yeah. it's fine. So it's been, it's not been too bad. Oh, in New York City. Swarming bars, yeah. Yeah, bars are different because you're packed in and, yeah. I moved to Vancouver if the border wasn't closed, yeah. but that's probably why it's closed. You're, you're in Brooklyn, right? Like you're in right. New York, right? So, so you get the sense of that. Yeah. The border is closed for the time being. Yeah. Like there's no opening date. Yeah, right I now. laugh because the... Is it Rob Ford, basically? Someone made the comment, are you opening borders? He's like, we don't want Americans here. <laughs> he made some comment like that. But I yeah. think for the time being, it's it's going to probably stay closed. But yeah. we'll just have to see. Well, yeah. in, in like the U.S. is at its highest point it's oh, ever Rob been. Oh, Rob Ford. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I don't see it opening anytime soon. It has to go down below the point where they closed it. Yeah. And it's nowhere near that right now. I, well, depending on the state, yeah. yeah. Depending on the state. Yeah. But, they may treat the U.S. as a whole because people could just drive from anywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. hopefully things will just get better and better. Fingers crossed. I mean, Soon. I hope in the in the U.S. it starts improving there because yeah. some states have gone backwards, it's, but it's some, some are better. So It's really rough. I just feel for everyone, wherever yeah. they are, 
So we hope managing you guys, as best they, they can, right? Yeah, because so. most of our viewership is in the U.S. So yeah. we hope hope you guys get a lot better soon. Yeah. How do Canadians get over the border yeah, to they blame? Don't. <laughs> we don't get cheap they gas don't. anymore. No. And we have an electric car. Yeah. <laughs> And well, we haven't put uh, any gas a, till since February. Yeah, it's no, it's a, it's the Volt, so it's got a hybrid engine in it, it does but have, it basically yeah. runs off electricity, and we're very grateful for that right now. So. Yeah, but we'll get yeah. into that uh, with Daryl Spice Jr. Oh, yes. He's a huge proponent of, of electric, electric vehicles Excellent. and electric technology. We'll have some chatting about that. Then. We will, so we'll yeah. save that for yeah for him. Yeah, a Volt. A Volt. Volt. Yeah. So it's best of both, both worlds. Yeah. We keep it pretty much on electric 99.9 percent yeah. of the time range extended evs range extended because it can run completely on electric so, so we have our own charger at our house yeah <laughs> it's awesome yeah. oh my god yeah like i always say it feels like driving the future yeah ears perk up at oh. talk of electric cars oh. yeah 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 because al, and, and, al drives an electric car too uh, yeah. And, and, and honestly, um, the Volt is a great vehicle and oh it's so God. sad that, that they've, discontinued. they've shut, discontinued it. It um, was like the best stepping stone. It's cheap enough yeah. that people can get into it and you can run it just on electricity. Yeah. And it, and it doesn't have the huge range of the Tesla, but for you us, can. I commute and it runs off commute. Yeah. GM cannot get out of its own way. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, they didn't advertise it ever. My entire the, commute is on the electric mileage, which is all I care about. Cause yeah. that's the majority of my driving. So yeah, cat. Pixel. <laughs> anyway, we got a bit off track. Anyway, yeah. Let's um, wrap it up. We did. I'm going to eat a cat soon. Come yeah. On, we're starving. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you everybody yeah. for tuning in and we will see you on Tuesday. Yeah. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.